So we are on our way to Fettered Hot Springs. You've got your four new followers. It's right up there. You're going to try and walk back into the town that these people were just fired from to sleep tonight, or are you going to camp outside the town? I think we're going to camp here. Um, we already set up to start eating and whatnot, so I think camping here with the Fettered people makes sense, and then tomorrow we'll head through and go to the Holy City Ember. Um, what was the Ember's tent home. situation? Uh, well, the four new people are going to be sleeping without tents because they don't have them. Yeah, we have was a there a thing where Arrakis and me had like a tent or something? I think we have a tent, yeah, for the two of us. Let me check my character sheet to see if this tent exists beyond the Is... areas of my mind. Do you have a tent on your character sheet, Gra? I, I don't have shit. I don't have fucking shit on me. I'm a bear, motherfucker. You don't have anything? You know, I don't have any. shit. I keep forgetting that we can't money. like just randomly add people to the group because there's a Bruid in the party. That's right. Yes, we may have. Um... We have a tent on one of the followers. Um, there you go. So that's my tent. They're, they're, they're carrying. He's carrying for me. Yeah. Grau asks me, like, "Where's our tent?" Yeah. And I look around. And I think for a second. And I think back to the tent that I've left in my workshop, and then my hand points, moving slowly towards one of the camp followers and say, there you go, that's our tent over there. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you know I have trouble sleeping when people watch me. Absolutely, no, I agree. The, I was one or two. I mean, it's taken me a while to get used to you guys, and I think we're all friends now, but this is too many new people for me, especially with where we're going. So, bro, why don't you go and get the tent? And yeah. I'll, um, <clears throat> you know, then the two of us, I'll set it up, and we can sleep right. separately. Yeah, I can do that, yeah. Cool. I set up my tent and uh, I bring Stacy in and we go to bed not in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, in a very normal you know, way. Squire yeah. night. Weird till you mention it. Sleeping arrangement. Well, I just wanted to say that it wasn't weird because. Do you say uh, that to her when you get like th no, this? Isn't weird because it's the not way. weird. It's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not. Yeah. This is a, a traditional relationship. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy, uh, I need you to. Clean my sword. <laughs> Stop! You're disgusting. Stop, Nick. You're out of order. Why? You're weird. Next thing. Go. Don't forget to start your recordings, Chiefs. Oh my god. Good idea. Boom. I started Done. my recording. Already doing it. Yeah. Way ahead yeah. of you. Okay. Uh, next thing. Well, it's not that <clears throat> far to Holy City Emberstone. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like a week or so until you get there. Um... And with our absolute we're fucking gonna... posse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're just going to skip ahead a little bit. You're going to walk around Fetter's Hot Springs. You're going to pass through Springview. We're not going to worry about this, but um, that's going to be one, two, three days later. That is going to be the 23rd of September. You're approaching this town of Coration. And this map that you're seeing on screen right here, this is an old map made in an old way. Uh, so forgive the the ugliness of this this ugly ugly map. Okay. Um, but we're approaching this town over here from this southern road, and it's as we're approaching this town that we come into our first snag of our journey, the first um first little problem here. You see, uh, as these two roads here merge together into one, right before the town of Coration. Coraton. Coraton, thank you. Um, Sounds like a, there's like a little... Star Wars planet, Neil. True. Yeah. Mm. Watch out. There's, a, there's like a little, uh, what do you call it? Like a little signpost. You know, it's maybe three feet wide, three feet tall, lifted two feet, maybe three feet off the ground, a little roof on it to like you can stand underneath it and it, you won't get rained on or at least to, you know, cover whatever's on there so it won't get destroyed by the rain. And there's some pieces of paper and there's some like wood blocks that have been attached up there. And... Is it a wanted sign? Yeah, there's a, there's a series of wanted posters, a whole bunch of them. Nothing too uncommon, but as you stand there taking a look at these signs, because it's a signpost as you're traveling, it, it behooves you to read the signs along the road. You do see a drawing of Arrakis. It's old. It's underneath a couple of other things. It's kind of like covered from left and right. But as you you can see the red robes and you see the leg and you can just brush aside a, a newer paper. 
can see Arrakis's face right there. How accurate is it to his current uh, form? Well, Arrakis has aged a little bit, but not that much. Um, the skill of the artisan is the bigger question here. And the poster here, you know, plenty of people have seen it. In fact, the new four mercenaries you picked up have probably seen a poster like this before, but they didn't recognize Arrakis mm -hmm. because, you know, if you've gone to the, the post office and you see the FBI's top 10 most wanted figures in the post office, You're like... Not remembering it. I'm not going to fucking remember it, that you? shit. Yeah. yeah, but if you were to put Arrakis next to the poster and look between the two of them, if you were a guard who was looking for one of these wanted people or a, a bandit or a mercenary or a bounty hunter, you would at least stop and start asking questions. If not thinking it was him outright. If you were, if you were on the lookout, you would know or suspect. Hmm. Well, you said it's like buried under loads of other wanted posters. Yeah, like, you know, it's in the middle and then there's one kind of overlapping this way and one kind of overlapping this way and there's other stuff. It's old. It's been here for a while. I um it's reward. Yeah. What's the reward? Uh, 10,000 gold, right? I, was it 10,000? I it think was it was 10,000 10, or 1,000. I think it was 10. Presuming I think it was 10,000. This is the same wanted poster that the uh, halfling had. Yeah. I, uh, I, I see August looking at it and using my raven stuff i like reach over his shoulder and sort of like use the stuff to like pull the pull the wanted poster off the, off the mm -hmm. off the board and uh yeah kind of just like i'll get, get hold of it and like scrunch it up and throw it on the floor and say um well less people that see that the better i suppose it's keep a low profile maybe don't leave it on the floor maybe <clears throat> take it with you i then i whisper to rackus leave it there and someone comes and picks it up and they're gonna suspect that you're here i mean it's like it's a thousand gold bounty yeah a thousand. okay oh okay it's like in the dirt in the mud and i'm not picking it back up you know i i, I stamp it into the mud i or will pick the wanted poster up and i will dust it off and i'll put it in my bag of holding yeah all right i forgot about the bag of holding let's just keep moving <clears throat> yeah Okay. I uh, I walk up at that point and I'm like, what's the holdup, lads? What's going on? Any good earners? Well, Arrakis could be a good earner if that's what you're asking for. There's a wanted poster up there again for him. Oh, I if only I was looking for retirement. Sadly, it's not enough to retire. We would have turned you in, Arrakis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give him a, a lot of coins, but it's probably not worth your life. <laughs> I, I move on. Arrakis, you've gotten funnier. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, I was listening to this conversation, ahead. shaking his head at the implication that these friends that he's found would have had enough coin just to betray each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this bullshit by now. <laughs> Thank you very much. A um, thousand gold is about a hundred thousand USD. Counting for inflation, it's like a hundred and thirty thousand USD. I think we were just having a conversation before the show started about what we would do for 130,000 USD. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But so if there was a magical door in your house, guys. I would go. I would end there. Um, anyway, looking up ahead of the road is the town of Coraton. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. And you know when we're having this conversation at the, at the, the wanted poster, as mm -hmm. I kick the thing into the floor and I see August pick it back up, I look around the assembled party here and I want to see if this interaction has been noticed by like those guards that we met and you know the new followers yeah, that I mean, we've they're, gained. They're in the party. They've seen you guys walk up and browse all of the, the signs and then you grabbed one and tossed it in the ground and stamped on it and Moon picked it up. Yeah, like what's their reaction to me as I'm looking at them as this is happening? You then take a glance back to the rest of the party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they're just kind of, you know, they've been walking for a few days. They're taking a breather while everyone else is resting. Someone's petting a, a dog. Someone else is looking through supplies. Other people are just kind of standing there watching. They're not like, oh, I feel like anyone's taking too much interest in this. 
I'll give them like a glare, but otherwise I do not. Cheeto bites whoever's check. petting him because he has really low willpower. God damn it, Cheeto! Will you stop it? <laughs> oh, twenty-nine now. <laughs> Cheeto. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no one seems to be taking too much interested interest in the wanted poster okay. shenanigans that are going on. Good. Yeah. Carry on with my day. <clears throat> I put the right. one in poster in my bag of holding. This could be useful in the future if I ever need to fake that we're like bounty hunters already have Arrakis or something. Mm. I keep it in my bag. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't need to arrest him. I've already arrested him. I've already arrested him. <laughs> <laughs> Look, boom. Just, here's my one in poster. Yeah. He's just walking freely in yeah. and amongst us with his weapons and his robes. He knows that he books. can't escape, but he's terrified. It's exactly. Fine. Well, the town up ahead is Coraton, and it is situated on an island in this river with a bridge leading to it and from it. And probably on both ends of the bridge, and certainly on this end of the bridge, is a watchman, a set of guards, just keeping an eye on who comes in and who comes out of the town. Um, so if you're going to be crossing the river here at Coraton, you're going to have to cross a bridge with guards who are you know, just down road from that wanted sign. He's just trying to make you paranoid, guys. It's fine. Yeah. It's how many guards, Neil? Uh, it's two on the ground, and then, like, you know, you can see two on a wall, but there's probably more behind the wall who are checking the inside. Four are visible. You would expect maybe six or eight total. That's fine. I confident. You know, I don't go first. Well, I'm not like hiding in the back or anything like that. You're not so last, I'm, yeah. I'm in you're the like third, of the pack. you know, yeah. third, fourth. I'll lead with my uh, horse, Schnickel Fritz the second. Oh, wait, sorry. One little quick, quick question. How is my hair being held in the wanted poster? Is it like loose, free flowing? I think that's how you used to dress. So, yeah. Yeah. So I think I'll wear my hood up then so that you can't mm -hmm. see my hair. And it's at least like not right. immediately similar. Yeah, yeah, you gotta put the hood up to make yourself less suspicious. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I know if I want to, like, not attract attention, I, I I always walk around with my hood up. You know, so the cops won't, won't think I'm a suspicious <laughs> person. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Is it raining? Would he have I put, I wear my hood, hood up? I put it up in a non-suspicious way, though, Now, Yeah, weather you do, check. You do that in a very <laughs> suspicious way. Okay, you're just doing, like, yeah. a quick little... Yeah, yeah, yeah like see? that, like, yeah. There, like, you're fine. Yeah, that's, less, that's so much less suspicious. It's perfectly reasonable. Got it. Um, it is not raining. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it cold? It's hot though, you know. In the hat. It's uh, September, so it's not bad. What is nice? <laughs> it's the perfect day. <laughs> yeah, that's actually quite nice. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, so it sounds to me like the party's taking absolutely zero precautions as you walk into this town. That is correct. No, wait. I say to I say to Iraq, it's like you need to. To clean yourself up, you you look too similar to that. You're right, Ren. Give me a moment. I, uh, Neil, is there a tree I can walk behind? A tree? Yeah, or something, you know. Some sort of line um, of sight blocker yeah. from the rest of the party. If you take a look at the map, um, the wanted poster is, like, at the end of this this road mark that I've just made, because this is where, like, the roads diverge. So the, mm -hmm. the sign post is uh, right here. Uh, there are some trees closer to the bank of the river. So if you were to walk down the road, you could head off behind a tree and then come back to the road. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So as I'm behind the tree, I'll cast Alter Self on me. And I will just change myself into, like, someone with short blonde hair, lighter colored skin. Okay. I'm so glad that you, you didn't had turn into memorized. the bird man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to turn into the bird man. So I now have a non-significant amount of time to get through, so I'm hoping that we're near... You know, I'm not doing this if I'm a 20-minute walk away from the guard, is what I'm saying. No, no, it's pretty close, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you can alter your appearance and form, including clothing and equipment to appear taller or shorter, thin or fat, or in between human, humanoid or any other generally man-shaped bipedal creature. Cast may only turn into races or species they're personally familiar with. Your body can undergo limited physical alterations. Your size can be changed up to 50%. Yeah. Would so, you get more damage like a 
strength? Or not a strength. What is it? Nope. An enlarged spell? Okay, just making sure. I don't think so. Nope. Ooh, even if it <clears throat> if you claws like natural weapons. I think so, you get their natural stuff, yeah. I come out from behind the tree and walk <laughs> straight to like August and Growl and Ren. And I say, Alright, let's get through the checkpoint. Ace up. Did you specify whether you were gonna be taller or fatter or shorter or thinner? Um maybe like a little bit How shorter, more stocky, short blonde hair, and white skin. You look like a halfling, they're yeah. gonna take your feet. <laughs> no, like you know, rather than being like six foot um, you know, he's like five foot eight, but he's like more broad shouldered. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, I lead the party. We'll have our four guards at the end. Um, and then Stacy will be right next to me. I'll be towards the front. One I'll moment. Be anywhere, I don't mind. I... I'm Roman. I'm in the, you be in my in the party. Oh, yeah. Who is playing the music that says, tell us how you're positioned. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Kobe's playing the music that says that this guard check is going to take longer than the duration of this spell, in which case yep. some shit could go down. Or I will. Like, likely to go down. I am excited. I have been waiting for an encounter to fight people, so let's. I'm, I'm a murder hobo. That's the kind of player I am. I'm ready. Let's do it. I want let's to kill, kill this whole town while we're out. I want let's to go. kill the entire town. Kill the no. town. No. Fight someone. Um, okay. Human time. Guards. <laughs> they ask questions. Who are you? What are you doing here? Where are you going? You can give all your honest answers. We're going to Holy City Emberstone. Mm -hmm. You know, these are our people. They let you through. Um, this is not one of those walled situations where they take your weapons from you because most people just pass through this town and move out on to the other side. And so this is one of those towns where you, despite it being walled, yeah. um, you can keep all your gear and no one gives a shit. Uh, but you do get the warning, you know, don't start any muss, don't start any fuss, any any foreigners that are causing trouble in around these parts, you know, we deal with pretty swiftly, blah, blah, blah. The usual threats that you get. Um, and you can pass on through the town. How long does that spell last? Because you got to get through the town and out the other side. 3d4 in that plus two rounds per level. Yeah. And your fourth level? Yeah, so 3d4 plus eight. Shall I roll it? Um, let me decide how long it takes to get to through the town before you do that. You're just going straight through the town. It'll take you about 15 minutes. Roll it. Fucking okay. right on the money. <laughs> nice. So we walk back right out the other on side, the money. And I turn back into myself as we're walking away from the guards. So I think uh, Arrakis is sweating as we're going through the second checkpoint because he knows that. You know, like it's, maybe the town's yeah. been busy. It's like taking slightly longer to get through the crowds than he expected. And as we're waiting to get checked on that other side of the gate, he's worried because he knows the spell could run out at any moment. It's one thing for it to run out before and risk it. It's another for it to run out like while the guard's looking at him. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's um, just I've rolled fine. the guard's perception check or luck check, whatever you want to call it. They've rolled a two. So Arrakis is probably one of the first people that they see. Mm. And then as they wave you past, they start checking the rest of the party, you know, just give them a quick little once over, maybe look in your car or backpack. Um, you will change and have to sort of keep your back to the wall. Yeah. Uh, prevent anyone from seeing the change, but it's easy. It's fun. It's fine. You move on through. Who needs this tense music? Nice, all right, we did it. Good job. Yeah. Easy boy. You just saved the whole village, Neil. Yeah. Yep. They're all alive. I really think that you. you could take a whole city at this point? Yeah, our four guards are level seven, of course. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're just a hop, skip, and a jump away from Holy City Emberstone. It's only going to take you a few more days to get there. Um... Anything interesting happening along amongst the party? You've What's got happening new people? in these towns? Hmm? I'm looking for thievery opportunities. There's some pockets that need to be lightened. Yeah, if you let me know as well, I can cast personal perception filter on you on a specific day if we go to the town and there's a market or something like that. Or if we know there's yeah. going to be a market. 
while he does that, I'm going to be um, using my training from him to talk to the guards for the next few days. I kind of want to just learn more about them and see what makes them like tick. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry to say, Jamie, I've rolled. These are the most boring towns you've ever passed through in your life. Like absolutely, completely sad, boring, not even like, um, like uh, falling apart and destitute and like they don't have it. They just don't have any taste. Like you walk through the streets and the fashion that's in right now is like burlap cloaks and like string rings on fingers. Just worthless. It's completely worthless everywhere you go. Good grief. It's it really, I mean, they rolled a two, a three, and a six <clears throat> on their um, on their wealth and opportunity checks. So it's, it's real bad. Shithole towns. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Not even, can but I even make a pickpocket check to see if I can even pilfer some copper my way through? Oh, you can totally make a pickpocket check anytime you want, but just in terms of opportunity... What's in is like ripped jeans and, you know, old used rags that you picked up off the ground. It, it, like the, the thrift style is in right now. And so it looks like everyone is choosing to um, wear crap. If you want to go and like grab, see what you can pull out of these oily rags they found on the ground. I look for a dude who guest. looks a little bit too cr- clean, right? Looks like a poser, okay? Mm. He's got to have a couple silver on him. And I rolled my pickpocket check already. Oh, that's a good check. Yeah. Poser, huh? He's a poser. Yeah, you can grab six, uh, I'm sorry, ten copper and two silver out of this guy's pockets. Boom. As you walk Big money. Past him. Easy money. money. That's mm-hmm. beers. You just buy the beers. beers. Yeah. True. True. Good job. Mm-hmm. Well done. <laughs> All right. Time to drink. Well played, Ren. Um, yeah, so I guess there's not too much going on in these towns then. We kind of just pass through. Um, yeah, you're just sort of walking on through. The only other town worth of note before you get to Holy City Emberstone would be Lockstein. Um, and that's just another one of these sort of Rossi Empire. They also rolled a two on their worth picking uh, checks. It's not much going on in here. Open town, no walls. During these days, Some folks just live in their lives. I want to start like. I want to always have dinner with the four guards. My goal here is Mm -hmm. I want to turn these people into, you know, we're paying them money right now to work for us. My eventual goal is to turn them into, wow, we really believe in this guy's cause. We still want money, but we also want to follow him. Like, we want to be his follower. So I'm going to start slowly revealing information about kind of like who I am, where I'm from. Um, You know, someone might ask me like, oh, you're a knight, yeah? And then I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm from like this town and stuff like that. What what um, sort of town do you tell them you're from? Are you giving I them tell truth them, or lies? I'm giving them truth. Yeah. It's uh, not just that you want to like convince them into your cause, but you have to make your cause everything for them. Like you need to turn them into uh, August, Augustian. You know what Augustian, I mean? Like they have to yeah. believe that actually mm. if we fucking restore August to the seat of his thing, that will actually make the world a better place. And I want we'll it to make the be world a better place. They're going to be nobles in my empire. Um, I'm not feeding them that line yet, but I mm-hmm. am definitely trying to work on them in the fact that... You don't of... want to sell too hard too fast. Yeah. yeah. Give me... Um, just give me a, an overall charisma check for this first, you know, the first week that you... Between getting them and between getting to Holy City Emberstone. Nice. Yeah, so you get to learn a little bit about these folks. They're all uh, youngish single men. I don't have much going for them. They do have family back in Fetters Hot Springs or you know, in a couple of the surrounding scattered villages. Um, and mostly at this point, they're just like really down because the, the one thing that they've been doing this whole time has been pulled out from underneath them and they've been physically beaten and their friends killed for uh, what they thought was doing the right thing. So this so, uh, next they're pretty... week coming up, <clears throat> after hearing that, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to start telling them you know about how my life omega giga sucks because all mm. of my family died but i still have hope and something to fight for um and that is because i am the prince of the area and i'm gonna go and take it back um so i'm gonna try and feed them like hey my life is worse than yours and i'm still working towards my betterment you tell them that you're, you're i tell these prince? four yeah i let them know because did you 
Who gives did you tell like the that? others? Did you tell Rudy, Melvin, and Stacy? Stacy knows for sure. Um, Rudy and Melvin, if they're there, if they want to be there at my, you know, dinners, they're not excluded. So you can roll for that. I'm just kind of like, I was focusing on those four. Stacy for okay. sure knows my story, and Rudy and Melvin, if they want to be there, they can be. Um, but during these next week or whatever, I am focusing on camp time. Kind of what I think that my uncle would want. You know, he's told me that I need to build an army, I need to be a leader, and that's kind of what uh, August is focusing on now. Hmm. The thought of this traveler being a prince is an interesting concept for these guys to, to deal with, because they just they met you on the road more or less at random. I have a whole bunch of questions for you. Well, if you're a prince, are these your servants? And they'll point to the other three members of the party. Uh, no, these are my friends. That is my wizard. Uh, th that is my friend, Grau. And this man oh. right here is uh, my uncle, who has taught me everything I know. Why are you friends with Grau? He's from far away, just kind of like you guys. I met him on the road, and... Um... You know, we've been working for each other's benefit. What about the wizard? Is he from your hometown? Did he come with you, like your uncle? No, I met him on the road as well. As you see, uh, the gods are with me and uh, are bringing people who I need into my direct contact, is what I believe. Which god is your favorite? Jeez. I'm just... I'm throwing you questions no, like, yeah. out of the blue, okay. you know, over the course of the whole dinner. You say cheese? Cheese, for sure. Uh, it's who my father had followed, but I think that he had the wrong idea um, <clears throat> of how he followed her. And then I'll kind of go on to explain how my parents followed cheese, which was a very strict, like, if you're any, if you show, like, if you don't show uh, etiquette, or if you're, like, born disabled, like, they'll kill you because they feel like you're an affront to, like, the god of beauty. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas my more understanding of it now is, like, life is beautiful and everyone has something to offer. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm kind of moving more towards that way of following cheese rather than the very strict, like, if you're not perfect, you're impure and you need to be changed. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm mm hmm And I'll explain that to him over the course of the few days in dinner and i'll show him my amulet okay well with that 27 and these great answers and your affluent accent that you can put back on at will they, they buy in they believe that you're a prince um you can also tell that makes them a little nervous traveling with a deposed prince has its benefits but it also brings mm. with it a certain amount of danger so they're going to ask you if um, essentially, why is it safe to travel with you? Like, why aren't there assassins out to kill you? Uh, there are not assassins out to kill me, to my knowledge. Um, and I don't think... I think it's safe because currently nobody knows that I'm uh, back to normal. You see, I used to be a bullywug, and my uncle helped me escape from Vantus. Uh, I was turned into a bullywug by... You've probably never heard of them, but it's a man, a woman, I can't remember, of the name of Wattis Thresh. Now they've never heard of Wattis Thresh. Mm. Nothing <clears throat> much. What is Thresh with you? <laughs> <laughs> uh... <clears throat> All right, we're going to take our first break right there. <laughs> Will I emotionally recover from that damage? And we'll be back with a little bit more on the other side. So we're at the walls of Holy City Emberstone. We get all the way up to the walls. And once again, one of those walled areas where you're going to have to pass through and buy some guards. Nick, are you going to be are you going to be pulling out the old altar self? Magical What do I, I need to understand how common kind of like anti-magic wards are on gates of big cities and how big this city is and try and make a judgment mm. as to whether I think that's a real risk or not. Mm. You're you're a smart cookie, my friend. Yes, you're he would have got me there. Wear. He would have got me. This is a big. I'm I'm asking because like clearly like that last checkpoint 
wasn't going to have an anti magic ward on the gate, but yeah. this is holy city emberstone. Like it might, this place might, because that's the kind of thing that clerics do. And I assume there's clerics here. So, See, Nick, the mistake you made is that telling Neil he had actually Alfred's never one. thought of that. Yeah, I know, but now I you've know. told him. Now you've well, told him. Got to be careful, haven't I? <laughs> It's sorts of magics that would dispel illusions or enchantments or have any sort of anti-magic on it are usually pretty old. You need really powerful spellcasters for that. And in the past 1500 years, you really haven't had many of those. Uh, before the world was engulfed in flames and cracks appeared in the ground and cities toppled, um, that stuff was a little bit more accessible. And there were great empires during the Age of Empire, uh, during the Age of Might, that had powerful magics that could do this sort of thing. And going further back in time, there was even more, you know, extreme casters, but the world was a lot smaller then. So most of these towns that you pass and villages you pass, they're, they're relatively new, you know, definitely since the, the cracks in the ground. Holy City Emberstone, though, this is an ancient city. This city has been here since the dawn of time, they say. So if any city, yeah, that you visited at all during this expedition, during this entire campaign, would have such wards. It would be this one. In fact, you're pretty certain if you came back to this city 2,000 years in the past, it absolutely 100% would have had those wards. However, most magics aren't permanent. Even things with the permanency spell on them aren't necessarily mm. permanent. Mm. And through time and through erosion and through wars these things can be broken if there had been wards placed along the inside of the gate leading into the city and then like the walls had been destroyed in a conflict and rebuilt those wards would be gone so the question really before you is because this town definitely used to have that level of magic you don't know which particular spells but certainly that level of protection the question is does the city still have that level of protection? I have a little bit of a plan. Um, so I'm having this conversation with Ren. I'm explaining to him that old cities like this might have wards dispelling magic. And so I'm hesitant to use the spell I used earlier. However, oh, if we could do a test. Um, like my great uncle's bedroom was said to have an enlarged spell. Uh, in bedroom and spell. There you go. Well, that's the kind of um, bizarre spells that uh, wizards only employed by ridiculous noble people would come up with, but I can better <laughs> believe it. But anyway, I was thinking of a test. If we could find some way to pass something magic through those doors and see if the effect was cancelled, that could work. I could enchant a coin with some moon glow. Maybe you could... Are you only it. talking to him? Uh, no. Not necessarily. You could sneak it into the pack or the pocket of a passerby as they're heading for the gate. We can keep a sharp eye out, see if the glow survives passing through the door, and if it does, I can change my appearance and pass through the gods. It would also be simpler is, um, is give it to me and I make my way in and, and then I come back out. I'm not, not that suspicious to come in and, out, in and out of the gate, is it? I yeah, you're right. You're right. There's a... a I suppose not. Right, if there's a bit of time. All right, okay. Like, I'll just Maybe, come up uh, to the gate. And I'll ask, yeah. like, hey, is this is this place here? And I'll be like, okay. And then I go to that place. And then I come back. And we're like, all right, I'm going to go get my friends. Boom. I could also just reach into my bag um, of holding and see if I can pull out coins when I'm near the gate. It also, that's a good point. A good it idea, um, Arrakis, Sakara, who maybe not. And I'm kind of like. <laughs> looking at the robes and I'm like maybe maybe you don't need wizard's robes maybe you take those off it's not how this works isn't do it just for vanity do Sakaja? it's not vanity half the point of being a wizard is respect from the lesser people if I don't have the robes then what's the okay, point okay well I think you'll have plenty of respect when you're stomped into the dirt by the guards of the city when they realize that you're wanted listen we were having a nice conversation you were onto something there why didn't I just make you a a glowing coin, and you can go and test it. Perfect. Glowing coin it is. And okay. Ren will, like, cheerfully hold his hand out. I will, uh, I take a... <laughs> Don't give the coin back. I take a, <laughs> a bronze coin. Fucker. A copper coin. No, I haven't got any fuck. I give him a silver coin. Okay. <clears throat> I, hold um, it into, I hold it in my hand, right? I hold it up to you. And, uh, 
I sort of like, you know, ooh, you, wait, do you put the coin in my hands? No, I put it in my hand and then it, it starts to, it starts to glow in my palm after I finish my arcane words and I pick it up with my left hand and place it in your hand and say, uh, it'll only last four or five minutes, so. I try to, I try to slide of hand the coin into my pocket without Arrakis noticing. Does he notice? Mm, I rolled an 89. There, yeah, there are going to be penalties on that because he's like standing right in front of you and he just hands you the coin, so he'll notice. That's okay, Damn. I didn't say anything. So yeah. I was, I was just going to play a prank like, what coin? <laughs> I, uh, I say, it only lasts four minutes, go. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll be, I'll be right back. I'll, I'll kind of like, I'm not jogging, but I'm power, power walking. I'm trying to get there quick. Right. Right. Yeah, you can get up, there's a little bit of a line, you, you're just a single person, pretty easy to go. You know, the groups are on one side, the individuals are on the other. You can get them through the gates. The gates are thick. They're made of big stone blocks. Uh, they're maybe 10, 15 feet thick are the walls here at the base. Um, and so you can walk on through them, being searched down. This is another one of those cities where weapons and armor and all that sort of stuff are allowed. Mm. Holy City Ember Stone is a... a famous area and it has two cities it's the inner city and the outer city the inner city is like the true holy city the outer city is like all the people that you know built a city around the the sacred um religious center at the, mi the middle of everything so walking through these outer walls um regular searching you can come on in there's a lot of people that come here pilgrims travelers merchants nobles empire people all sorts of folks come to holy city emberstone there's actually a lot of pilgrims that make their way here and uh you can get on in without any problems and when you check the magic item in your pocket once you're on the other side of the walls it, it seems to be intact it's still glowing it to be doing yeah perfect um to be fine i ask around um, a couple of people, if there's a couple of people standing around, just ask them, like, oh, where's a, where's a good inn for travelers? Like, I'm, I'm scouting ahead for my party. If you're not a pilgrim, and uh, you're not a merchant, and you're not a noble, and you don't work for the Empire, then you probably want to, and they point to a, a nearby four-story building in this packed city, uh, Provo Palace. That's the place to go. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll go check out Provo Palace. Sure, the food's fantastic, though. The food here is fantastic. Nice. And the Provo Palace is pretty freaking amazing. There's a lot of people in here. It's like a four story building. And there's got like a central open column so that when you're inside, you can kind of look up and see all four different floors. And there's multiple staircases going up and down. And the bottom floor is really only half a floor because most of it's a kitchen and a bar. And it's got maybe like. 400, 300 people, hundreds of people are in here on all the different floors scattered around merchants, uh, not merchants, uh, travelers, patrons, some a couple of locals here and there. And the diversity of people is pretty high too. You've got warriors, you've got some priests, you've got some clerics, you've got humans and halflings and dwarves, even a couple of half elves. You've got goblins over there and orcs over there. And there's some half orcs mixed with some hobgoblins and it's just, it's a place swarming with life from all over the Empire. Perfect. Uh, I make my way up to whatever looks to be like a reception desk or the closest thing to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll see on the ground floor, there's multiple entrances. And so at the entrance you've walked into, there is like a little booth, a little podium sort of thing with a, a person standing behind it. Um, a young lady, you know, she's got to be like 17, 18, 19 years old. Yeah, I'll uh, put a I'll, halfling. I'll put on my step stool. Noble, my noble riz, and I'll be like, "Why, well, hello there, uh, young maiden. Uh, I require a room for." And I start counting off the party. I'm like, uh, "Require rooms for nine? How many of us, sister? There's like two, four, eight. five, six, seven, and four. Eleven people. Eleven human people. I need lodgings and food for eleven people." Is that 11 separate rooms, or do you all want one big room? Uh, ooh, that's a great question. I think, uh, we will need at least three rooms. Four of us can share a room, and... And how many nights will you be staying, she says, interrupting you? Uh, is there an option for just a rolling average, just paying every day? 
yes. Uh, although, depending on bookings, you might have to get moved around a little bit if you're not going to book a time period. Not a problem. Uh, we, we definitely need... Splendid, then. Uh, we definitely need at least three rooms. Okay. Um, this will be pulled into your monthly expenses, so we're not going to worry about costs right now, and we're about to pay monthly expenses, like, tomorrow. So uh, no exchange of money at this moment. But she gets you your rooms, and she will hand you three room keys. They got little numbers on them, and she will uh, point. You know, if you go up to the third floor, the third and fourth floor where the bedrooms are, and there's some, like, dining areas on the third and fourth floor, first and second floor, first floor is the ground floor, um, it's for seating and everything, and there's also uh, another tavern area downstairs in the basement. You can use any of the doors and entrances to get in and out of the place. The building is open 24 hours a day. Food and beverages are served 24 hours a day. Um, also, and she gives you like this really sweet, you know, 17 year old halfling smile. Um, please don't cause any troubles. There's a lot of people here and the owner is a wizard. And he has the phantasmal killer spell. So, um, please don't I've, cause any troubles. Have you ever seen him it's use very it? very expensive spell components. Yes, I've seen it. It's it's terrifying to watch someone get hacked to bits <laughs> in their own mind, inside out. Fascinating. Yes. Absolutely fascinating. Wait, uh, I assure you, here, we so will not be causing... I have to clean up after the messes. I assure you. Please don't... <laughs> we won't be causing any problems. We're all humans, and we live on human time. Uh, out of a question here. Um, <clears throat> where would an adventurer find some work here? You know, I find myself with a little bit of a taste for earning a bit of coin, and I kind of, like, conspiratorially look, look around, kind of, like, suspiciously, like, and do pickpockets frequent this palace? The last pickpocket we had, I had to clean his... <sighs> intestines off the floor, but I suppose there are some that don't get caught or haven't been caught yet. Uh, as for work, uh, it depends on what you're looking for. The, the center of town, well, not the not the inner city, but towards the inner city, you, you can find some um, some some trade areas where, where various jobs are up for offer. And if you have friends or you have any semblance of charisma, uh, you might be able to find some work from other locals here in Provu's palace. Perfect. And if I might suggest, um, lie is a fantastic way to clean up blood, darling. Um, now, are there any clothing stores nearby? Yes. Yes, there are. Uh, could you point me in the rough direction? I'm like... Uh, Nozu's robes is just down the street. And they've got some fantastic garments. Brilliant. You're an absolute star. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, of course, is, is, if you have any more questions, please don't stop. Don't hesitate to ask. Is, is, is tipping acceptable here? What, what's, what's the average tip? Oh, you've been very helpful. I'll, I'll kind of start fumbling in my mind purse. Uh, tipping is acceptable. We appreciate it. Most people pay in coppers. Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, I tell you what, you've been especially helpful and you've got a very charming halfling smile. Well, how about a silver? I give her one silver. Thank you. My name is Shallot. I'll be here all day if you need anything. Ah, it was lovely to meet you, Shallot. My name is Renata. I'll be, uh, well, you know the rooms I'm staying in, and I hope to see you again. Cheers. Thank you. And she will write down your name in a ledger. You'll notice this. Like, as you say cheers, she quickly writes down Renatus along the room numbers and puts a little check mark next to your name under like a column with a header, like given key to... Uh, you know, they track all the information. Perfect. Uh, okay, so the first thing I do is I go up to the rooms and I figure out which one's the nicest. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, one of them ha it's a, has an outside-facing wall with a view of the outer city and the inner and a little bit of the inner city. And the other two rooms are on the other side with uh, no windows or ventilation to the outside world whatsoever. Okay. It's definitely a better room. We, <laughs> the, the heads of the party will be staying in the better room. Um, the, mm. the, the underlings can stay in the, in the grotty room. Okay, perfect. Uh, I will make my way to the clothing store. Um, mm -hmm. uh, whereupon I will inquire about uh, a set of robes for Arrakis because I'm tired of them wearing red robes in this area. Um, and I'm going to ask mm. for, um, well, before you, before you buy anything, um, 
Red robe's not just a fashion statement. That is part of the order of magic that pervades the area, is that if, when you become a member of the order, you are a red robed, a white robe, or a black robe wizard. And if you take off your robes, if you disguise yourself as something other than what you are, it's part of the social structure that you are um, trying to hide who you are. And the, the other orders may just take a very poor view of that. And if it's overdone, or if you, you know, if you if you're really trying to hide who you are, you're considered a renegade, and then it becomes like a an issue for the other order of wizards. Arrakis, like physically, he can take off his robes and change his clothes, um, but if it were ever to get out at all that he was doing that, he would be making an enemy of the entire like hierarchy of magic. It would be like if you were, I don't know. Um, plagiarize not it would be worse than plagiarizing at a university system it'd be like if you were using a university lab to make bombs mm. um then all the other universities in the area would probably be really really mad at you and you'd get in serious trouble you can't quite find the right and is this even like a here. like if he's on vacation he has to wear red robes like he's he's always in oh, the yeah. robes yeah this it's a life decision okay are they allowed to wear like a cloak over the robes Robes should be good. Like they're supposed to be your outer appearance. You're supposed to be identifying yourself as a red robed wizard to everyone who sees you. Is the objective? Okay. Well, so if you were to wear like a red cloak over your red robes, that might be okay. Well, then I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to make little red riding arrakis. So I'm going to look for a beautiful riding cloak of red. Um, mm -hmm. Ideally, some sort of animal uh, fiber wool any cotton whatever or even plant cotton whatever um i want it to be really comfortable mm -hmm. and i want it to look clearly like he is a red robe wizard but a different mm -hmm. one from the one then that was in the bounty hunter picture i want him right. to look this thing. right excellent I, th I found a better analogy it'd be like if you are a you know a private in the army who puts on general stars on your shoulders and you mm -hmm. walk around and someone sees you impersonating a like a high-ranking mm -hmm. officer Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're going to come for you no matter what the fuck you're doing. Even if you're just like having fun at a bar, you're getting in serious trouble for that shit. <clears throat> that's the that's the analogy I want to run with. Okay, perfect. Um, But you can get him some really, really nice clothes. How much do you want to spend on these really uh, nice clothes? Yeah. Okay. What would a, what would a, what would a set of clothes normally cost? Like, let's say if I'm a, a peasant laborer, what would I pay for clothes? If I was a mid ranking craftsman, what would I pay for clothes? And what would a noble pay for clothes? What's like, what's the like, what are we talking? Are fucking... Yeah. So, uh, welcome uh, to the economic like, sheet. A common robe would be like nine silver, and a nice robe, like a, a lightly embroidered robe, would be twenty gold, so two hundred silver. Uh, so you're probably going to be looking in the tens of gold category if you want to make him look really nice. I want to make him just look different to how he currently looks. So some sort of like. I don't know exactly how a Rockus looked, but I would imagine if 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 I yeah. Renatus had an idea of how he looked, I could maybe get him like a robe that was like red trimmed with green, right? And it would be well, like a cloak that he would throw over it that would kind of yeah. make him look slightly different. Mr. Nozu wants to sell you a red hound's tooth half cape that'll keep the rain off of you. Um that's got like little gold stitching to make the hound's tooth marks all over it. Perfect. How much is it? That's 15 gold, sir. 15 gold, you're off your... <clears throat> Excuse me, I shouldn't be rude. Um, have you got anything that's more in the silver range? Um, business has been slow lately, and um, I find my gold pouch a little bit lighter than I would like it to be. Of course, of course. And he'll take you down just a little bit, and he'll pull out this other, like, half cape, half cloak sort of thing. Um, it's red, and it just has, like, a little bit of a silver etching along the sides to give it just a little bit of a frame. Perfect. Uh, this is only... Um, Eight silver. Oh, eight silver is perfect. I'll take it, and I'll tip you a silver for being so helpful. Uh, perfect. Done. I pay him nine silver, and I get our friend Arrakis at least a new... I just gave myself a silver. At least um, a yeah. change of clothing, so he'll look slightly distinct from the bounty hunter picture. Because um, I assume he hasn't changed his clothes in the two and a half years that we've wandered around together so far. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I am also going to look for a hat a cap for him to put his hair under like a kind of like a like a monk's mm. cowl you know what i mean but red mm. mm -hmm. 
Uh, your common owls are probably going to be like two silver. Red is a fancier color. You can get one of those for five silver. Perfect. I, I pay for it uh, willingly, gladly. I tip the guy a silver. I shake his hand. I, I make him kiss my ring. No, no. I, uh, and then I, I head out of the place and I make my way back to the party. Okay. You meet up with the rest of the party? Yep. And, All's uh, fine. I'm All's like, well. Yeah, everything is perfect. I, I booked us into an inn and I did a couple of errands uh, and I, I turned to Arrakis and I say, Arrakis, uh, I got you a change of clothing uh, just to make you a little bit more um, what? distinct. And I hand him the cowl clothing. and the robe. Well, I mean, look, you've been wandering around with those rags. We can't have you in those for so long. And plus, and I'll kind of lean in and quietly say, it'll make you look different from the poster. Mm, yes. Uh, this is a very fine quality, Renatus. Thank you so much. I don't suppose you'd let me... Uh lead me to the tailor that had made these garments. I also, could. the the coin. Did it work? Oh yeah, the coin worked. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, it worked. Ah, fantastic. I look at the queue to get into the gate, Neil. Is it relatively short? Uh, It's probably like a 10 minute wait. I want to wait for the queue to die down a bit before I make the move. I'll bring yeah. up something then. We're going to wait here, Arrakis. <clears throat> Um, I, uh, I was going to say, you know, we have a lot of money. I talked to the four party members. I'm not doing a preaching to the whole fucking group, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it might be time for me to put in an order for some plate mail. Uh, they take a long time to make. It'll cost about, I think, 900 gold. 900 gold. How much do we have? That kind of money. Well, Autumn gave us 10,000. Yeah, that's 10,000 to complete the mission. We can't just spend that willy-nilly, can we? You can't just steal 900 gold. Maybe once we've done this, if we've got gold left over, we can talk about it, but that I seems know. very expensive. It is, yeah. I could buy a new spell book with that money. This is pro Well, do you need a new spell book? I don't, but I will eventually. I well, I'd need new armor. Do you? Looks fine to me. Uh, I've gotten uh, mortally injured in my last two or three battles, so I and, don't think it is fine, actually. And look at you, still strong as an ox, I say, uh, barely. slapping you on the arm. You're a... <clears throat> you know, you're a prince. And a you're prince a... wears plate. You make my point, Arrakis. Thank you. Now, well, I do agree we can wait until after we've paid the clerics, and maybe we can get a good deal to where it won't look suspicious to Autumn. Yeah. Well, well, I think we need to talk about it afterwards. I mean, we it's can spend going a to bit look of this money, but we should be careful. Yeah, it's going to look very weird if we rock up to the tower like, oh, Autumn, we only got three of the clerics, and you, me and you are like walking up gleaming. <laughs> as we, you know what I mean? Well, to be <laughs> yeah. fair, it will, it will take 16 weeks for this armor to be made. So yeah, yeah. we would have to come back way later. But I do agree. Let's say we get all of the clerics for 7,000 gold. I think that we could function to buy a thousand dollars or a yeah. thousand gold worth of armor I agree. but if we spend you know t nine thousand gold and we're going to come back with nothing i don't think it makes sense yep totally. and Let's... while we're talking about it ren i really appreciate the gesture here but i'm i'm a mom with a particular sense of style and i agree i could do with maybe some new robes but uh maybe we can go and visit this tailor together maybe we can get our money back and i'll put in a larger order for something more custom the, this you is just to get you through the a lot of Autumn's money. <laughs> I'm talking about 20 or 30 gold, bro. Did, Nothing more. Mm. Okay. Nothing wrong with spending someone else's money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best uh, kind uh, of money uh, to spend. Uh, Arrakis, this, this, this clothing, uh, the cap especially, is just to get you through the gate. That's all. Um, if you want to get them retailed or buy new ones, that's fine. It's just like the, in case the spell wouldn't work, right? That's why I was grabbing it. Oh, um, I Because yes. the queue is quite long, right? Mm. Yes, yes. No, 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 that's that's wise. If the queue doesn't settle down, I'll use it. But um, I think that's reasonable. Well, oh, you'll use it. Yes. While we're uh, Put them sitting on. here, Nick, Nick, I, I, I insist that you wear these clothes and we go right now. There's a really? beautiful room waiting for us. What would we right wait now? for? They're not going to recognize you. I got you a disguise. You're willing to risk my life on that? Your own, perhaps? Oh, come on. They Nobody remembers you. Just you don't even cool from around here. We just did the cool thing with the coin, and now you're just going to make it useless. 
Oh, you want to wait for the queue to die down? Well, why don't you just go through the single file queue on your own then? There is usually a single queue, that's true. It's maybe more risky though, no? Maybe. Oh, I feel like you're complicating things, but I'll, I'll Rack, wait, just wait. wear the fucking clothing he got you. What? What is this pride? Well, what the, because it's nothing to do with not wearing the clothing. I'm saying that they might still re they might still recognize me. Despite no one's gonna recognize this you. Shit hot. No offense. You're paranoid. Well, okay then. Why don't we swap clothing and then go through the gate and then when we get to our rooms we swap back. If so, fact though nobody notices. Look, why don't you just go in, and I'll meet you in the tavern when the queue dies down. If it's that big of a deal. Fine. Okay. Yeah, fine. Look, it's gonna look Leave. really weird that there's like this red robed guy. Like, it's not gonna and, look like, weird. Are we... I've got things uh, to read. I turn to the left, what do I see? I, I, I look towards the gate. How far am I and can the guards see us? Yeah, the guards can see you. Um, outside, there's a, a small little tea shop set out. Um, to your left, there, there's tea shop. People sitting there having some tea. There's some other people who are, you know, repacking their cart, moving things around to make certain boxes more accessible that have pulled off on this side of the road. There's some people who are waiting outside the gates, looking impatiently in the city, like they're waiting for their friends to show up or something. There's guards up on the wall looking down at you. It's like a, you know, 60 foot wall or something. They've got bows and they're not notched or anything, but they're kind of looking down, scoping out what's happening. There's some people over there uh, reshoeing an oxen who's just dropped a shoe. Yeah, and I'll kind of like, I'll, I'll wave my arm kind of like idly and I'll say, Arrakis, I appreciate your caution, but I actually think waiting makes you look more suspicious, particularly if you're wearing red robes. And people are <laughs> going to be like, well, why is there a red robe with it standing around I snatched outside? The hat. I snatched the hat back out from your hand and put it on my head. I <laughs> pull the cloak over my shoulders and say, fine, but if I get killed, it's your fault. If you get killed, it's my fault, I agree. If you get killed, I'll collect Good. the bounty. At this point, I hope Gra I get Growl's going to look at you like, you sure you want to wear that? I don't think it It looks pretty silly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank just you. Wow, enough. Look, we just got him to fucking wear usual. it. The hat looks not great. <laughs> it does not compliment your face. This is I'm what sorry. I'm saying. <laughs> if you had such of... luscious hair as me, would you really hide it under a hat like this? Your pride would be your suspicious downfall. Like this. You look like a criminal with the hat. The finger. hirelings, come over here. We're going in. We're getting in line. They get in line with you. I ride my horse in? Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Arrakis, are you going with the party or are you going to go stand in your own no, queue? No, I'm going with the party. Thing? I hope Great. that I get recognized. Jamie, and roll me a d20. Awesome. Here you go. Most important roll of your life. Don't roll a fucking one, dude. I swear to God. Five. It's good. Five is good. Five That's is not a great. one, two, or three. I think you're These fine. Lower good better. rolls. Yeah, five is fine. In this, in this situation, this was going to be their. Um, noticing ability so low is good for you here you. um you're welcome yep. nick you're welcome yep. now <clears throat> nick give me a perception check ah oh, perception you say yes please the dumb stat. 31 oh. nil hey, we're on oh. fire today what do i notice just to show you how absolutely lucky you are um on the the inside of these walls as you're walking through, they have all uh, right the where the guard station is, there are all the wanted posters of a certain value, and you get about <laughs> halfway through, and that's you. <laughs> right fucking there. Wait, I never noticed those and... going through? Nope. nope. <laughs> you're just, you're doing your thing, and you walked on through. He's a little bit more paranoid, and it's right there. And that five, this five is their, you know, noticing charisma check, technically. Yeah. Um, I didn't bother rolling their stats because there's no way these guards have 16 charisma. That's just not how they work. Um, so... If we had 16 charisma, you no. wouldn't be a god. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But anytime you're going to go in or out of these walls, your face is on display and these guards will see it every day. Sorry, I don't, really expect don't worry, to ever see I will not you, be making but... that mistake again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When I Great. pass through, can I just... What's the biggest number I see for gold? The biggest number on the wanted posters for gold as you scan them? Yeah, maybe even maybe even earlier when I scanned them, you know, we actually went through the posters. Um I'm sorry, Nick. It's all right. Got there in the end. I, I didn't realize I was putting <laughs> you in so much danger. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta roll a dice, it's all good. Um there the, the 
this little section mm -hmm. with elves. Like, oh. You know, eight posters in a row with elves. Actually, one is missing from the, the section of eight. It looks like there should be nine. One has been taken off in the middle of it all. Um, and they all have prices in the tens of thousands of GP range. And one of them sitting at the, the far end towards the outside of the gates is sitting at a flat 100,000 GP. Holy What's their fuck. name? I inspect the fuck out of that poster. Other guards kind of push you on forward. You can find another one uh, further Later. on inside the town as you look around. This is for an elf whose name <clears throat> is, uh, it's put in quotes, Barry, the elf's <laughs> name. And the little text underneath it for any of you who are literate will say, uh, it has a whole bunch of like derogatory terms, like uh, <clears throat> king of the, the elven seductresses um, that has... You know, uh, the arch fay written across it. It has the uh, the, the the twisted um, the, the twisted machinations of the was Forrest's friend named Barry. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, I just wait. That just comes to mind. Yeah, I yeah, might need to find this Barry guy. I can't remember the other one that I had for him. <clears throat> anyway, it's got a bunch of like, you know, names that this person Doesn't might go by, Grand titles Druid, that this it? person would go by. It does not say Grand Druid at all. And it is a, a masculine looking elf, as masculine as an elf can look, let's be honest here. Um, mm. Looking character. Cool. Um, as we get through the other side of the door, I'm wide eyed. <laughs> look at it, Ren, and I say, Did you see what I saw? The. The posters? Yeah. yeah, I saw those. Crazy. Well, uh, you'd be fine. Yeah, you you want to take me fine. to this, this tailor of yours? Yeah, let's go to the tailor. And I take him to uh, past Provo's Palace. And I take him to the... What was it called? Provo's Palace, thank you. Since it's, named Palace. After, since it's named after me, I'm assuming, Neil. Hence the what was the, why would you think it's named after it's you? It's fucking ridiculous. Name. You're a the, <laughs> the Embezzler's Emporium or whatever. What was it called again? The what? Loathing? It was... It was something robes. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No Zeus robes. No Zeus robes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No Zeus robes. So I will go into No Zeus robes, um, holding the cloak and heart, and I will say, uh, "Greetings, No Zeus." Greetings. Hello there. How may I be of assistance to you? My friend here, uh, trying to do something, a kind gesture for me, has chased a couple of items from your store here earlier today. I say. I whisper of. under my breath. Purchased. Motioning. Like I'm really posh, like purchased. <laughs> sort of motioning, motioning to the guy and I say, um, although, you know, the, the, the chap means well, but I have a very particular sense of style myself and, and, and an eye for quality and some gold burning a hole in my pocket. So I was hoping perhaps Nozu, instead of you might return my friend the few silver coins he paid for these things, you can take them back. They've barely been used. And instead, uh, I could commission something a bit more uh, bespoke, a robe, a replacement, I say. Commission, yes. Myself. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, do, do you have some fabrics? Maybe some choices of red I could look through? Some black yes, thread? Yes, of course. Good. Yes, yes. So what I, um, want, and what I kind of want to want, Neil, right, is I want this to be 50 gold pieces, this robe. I want it to be a darker red, so more of like a burgundy than a, than a kind of like bright red. And I want mm -hmm. to have like black embroidery over the shoulders and like kind of like down the arms that kind of look like shadow kind of encroaching like over my mm. shoulder and around my arms a little bit. So it's still red robes, mm -hmm. but it's a darker color. The red's darker and some of it's going to be like black embroidered. So it's going to look a little bit more kind of like darkish mm -hmm. red overall. And I want some pockets sewn on the inside as well so that it's suitable for a deep pocket spell. Nice. Great. Now, this thing you can absolutely 100% have made, no questions asked. It's just a matter of money. Yeah. The one thing I do want to let you know, though, is that you are describing some elaborate and distinctive clothing, which will make you stand out. It will make people think you're cool, uh, that you're rich, that you're powerful. But with that comes yeah, more fine. recognizability. Yeah, but I'm not necessarily, okay. as long as I'm not recognized as a ruckus, it's fine. I don't mind being. Why would someone on a wanted poster stand out on purpose, you know? Yeah. He's Ooh. doing the 800 IQ move. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. 
Um, you give the guy the description of what you want. He ponders for a minute. The robes for deep pockets? 50 gold pieces. Is what I'm looking to spend here. Yeah. Let me check my economics table. And where are you getting the gold from? I have 116 gold. Okay. Yeah. I think you can get yourself some 50 GP robes. Okay, and I'm Red, hoping that I know black, it's going to take him some shadowy. time, but probably only a few yes. days, right? Yeah. Well, ha there's no sewing machines. All of this shit has to be stitched oh, by hand, yeah. so it'll be about a week. Oh right, well, we can stick around for a week. Okay. Cool. Yep. Yeah, so I order uh, that money up front. Yeah, I give him the 50 gold. Excellent. Happy with that. Okay. Good. Give me just one moment, please. Mm. I'm thinking of buying a wizard's hat as well. Maybe kind of like a... Like a floppy kind of black one. I can find one, rather than like a really pointed one. Maybe that'll come to me another time. I ponder this as I make my order. Um, I if Araka says this out loud, I like... Start making plans in my mind of like getting a bell and sewing it to the tip of your hat. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, yeah, I think about a haircut as well, so I look less like my wanted picture. I think I think in my wanted poster, I'm probably non clean shaven, with kind of like long, kind of greasy black hair. Um, no, if I was, my job was looking for people that are wanted in like the city. One thing I would mm -hmm. do is I would regularly peruse barbers and ask them. Yeah, has anyone come in and got totally people. different style? Yeah. yeah. Good idea. <clears throat> so I think I'll get, yeah, I'll get my hair cut as well. It's still going to be like long black hair, but I just get it cut a bit shorter. I get my facial hair shaved off and cleaned up, you know, like uh, just looking a bit smarter rather than sort of as rugged and similar to the uh, wanted poster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Notes have been made. Cool. It'll take a week to get all this stuff done. As the party exits Nozu's robes, you can take a look around the city, and you can see that this is definitely the biggest city the party together <clears throat> has been in. I think individually, many of you have visited grander places, but this is one of these, you know, not wide avenues, like moderately wide avenues, but you know, four or five or six story buildings all over the place great stone architecture that's very old and here and there you can see places where buildings have been collapsed or destroyed and rebuilt um, and you'll notice as you're walking around and kind of exploring the town and the, the time that you're here that the there is a marked stone change um, there's a bunch of buildings that are usually like stone of one type and quality up to the second floor and then the third fourth and fifth floors look like a different type of stone and quality it looks like this was an ancient city that has experienced some sort of rebirth or renewal or regrowth on which on which other of uh, you know more floors have been added. And as you're looking at this, the the outer walls are made of that newer stone. Um, and the inner walls of the inner city when you pass by them look like that older stone. It might explain why the outer walls didn't have any protections mm -hmm. on them. They were either recently built or they were destroyed and then rebuilt or something like that. Uh, but there's a pretty clear distinction between old stone buildings and new stone buildings, or you know, new stone additions on buildings throughout the city. Wait, uh, I don't know if it will become relevant, but if you're interested. Yeah, a couple of quick questions just on that. <clears throat> what school of magic is like the kind of wards that would like guard a, a wall? Is that abjuration? Usually it's abjuration, but a little bit of everything. So I'm barred from abjuration, so I'm, this might mean that I, I can't answer this question. But I guess when I'm walking past the walls of the old town, do I see mm -hmm. the kind of runes I would expect if these were enchanted around the, the gateways? The gates themselves have clear arcane symbols that have been etched yeah. into stone doors. 
with metal and then have remained polished and kept up over the generations. And the doors are propped open. And so you can see on the inside of the archways, there are all sorts of glyphs and carvings. Now, as an experienced wizard, you would know that sometimes, sometimes people use magic in the same way that we use locks and security cameras. Sometimes you you put up a security mm. camera that doesn't actually do anything. It's a fake security camera, but just that it's there yeah. works. Or the lock on the front of your house, it's a piece of shit lock. It's completely, it's crap. But just having a shitty lock there is enough to deter most people. And so when you see arcane runes and words scrawled into doorways and walls, like, you know, how much of it's actually real and how much of it is just someone telegraphing that these are protected. Ooh, granted, Holy City and Bristol is probably all real. Yeah, um, okay. But uh, I think it's a risk that I'm not willing to take. So as far as Arax yeah. is concerned, he's got to treat these like they are enchanted. Yeah. Okay, well, we are here. We're in the city. Your mission, you've already chosen to accept it, so there's no backing out, is to find a cleric of Martha, a cleric of Reluna, a cleric of Chis, a cleric of Nerul, and a cleric of Nadinus, and convince them to come back and visit with Autumn. It's five clerics. This is a holy <clears throat> city, Emberstone. Five uh, clerics, one, one tower, baby. Religious Let's temples. do it. Which one am I missing? Reluna, Chis, Nadinus, Martha. Nerul? Nerul. Um, well, or, we already or, have some leads, right? We already know about Father Gregor, who is a cleric of Martha, and Father Tintin, who is a cleric of Nadinus, and they both should be in this city. And, um, mm. you know, we know some people who know them, at least, so we should probably start there. Well, I think you're probably best for that, Arrakis. I will go secure the transport of a carriage. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't we think need... they're going to want to walk around on their feet. We need... uh, do you want to secure the carriage now, or do you want to do it after you've acquired folks? Like, let me ask, uh, is the goal to recruit some clerics here and then immediately head back to Autumn's? Um, how, how... That's probably personally, the I, answer personally, to that. I think we can just send the clerics and say, here's a thousand gold pieces, you need to go like wait for us in papari maybe we could say have them wait for you in papari yeah and we could then take them to awesome from there because i think that that's a good idea high level clerics like they can travel the road on their own i think mm -hmm. that's a good idea yeah we will like pay for their carriage and stuff and send them there i don't know if they're gonna go for it but we'll see how much should or we, we can send our we can send our guards with them yeah we could <clears throat> are we, are, what do we think about an opening offer of a thousand gold that way. I think an opening offer of 1,500 gold is good because you're going to also... Ex or 1,000 gold if we're paying their expenses yeah. or 1,500 if expenses are included. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So I think we offer them 1,000 gold and say, you know, and we'll pay for your courage and stuff down there. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, now the clerics are definitely on the inner city. Right, yeah. that's it's that's that that's the holy section of everything. So maybe you're leaving behind Mr. Mr. Man. Well yeah, maybe Mr. I, Arrakis. Maybe I can't go in there then. Yeah, Arrakis will stay. I'll say, Well, if the, you can't go in, then you're gonna go secure the transports and I will uh deal with the clerics. I have uh, I have Growl, like to have to study have anyway. Renatus Growl magnificent King. as their assistant in either of these tasks. Oh. <clears throat> Uh, well, Ren, okay. I have uh, magical things to be getting on with, so if you want to secure the transport, I can be in the in here studying, and if you do need me for any spells, I say with a wink and a nudge, you just let oh, me know. Oh, I'm sorry. Is, 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 is arranging transport, is that above your wizardly pay grade? Yes. Below it? No, no, it's above it, Ren. That's exactly the right. Um, my mind is not mm. strong enough to handle such an advanced task, and sadly... Although it pays me to do it, I must turn to you for your expertise and such. Uh, I see, I see. Ah, uh, you know what it is? It's if, if it's if your hands get calloused, you can't cast spells anymore. That's how that works, right? It's That's you it, have though. to it's remain soft and supple. It's a, I'll stop it's by the apothecary and I'll get you some moisturizer. Don't you worry, honey. I got ah, you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that would be fantastic. Quit squabbling with my uncle Arrakis and go do your job. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going Grouch. in with me? Yes, yes. Boo. Um, I think Grouch should go. 
<laughs> There's some concern about Arrakis going through these walls with these glyphs and these yeah. magic wards. You're a bear by default. How do you feel about crossing these wards and walls? Is it... Yeah. Do you even... Could... I mean, granted, since you left the tower, these fucking humans have just been humaning all over the place, and you've been kind of along for the ride, but you've also been just like... I don't want to say a liability, but a little bit of dead weight there definitely, since you left. There's definitely always complications with me being a bear, and this could definitely be one of them. Have we thought about this uh, group? What do we think? Grau's going to bring this up as a concern. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't really know magic. What do you think, Arrakis? It's worth bringing up. I, I think if it would cancel my spell, it would probably cancel Grau's form yeah. as well. And it is and you and the bear? I am under a spell right now, I think. I don't know. Then the wizard and the bear sort of magic, yeah. will go, and the two noble kings will go talk to the clerics. Before you set off on this task, guys, just I know for you two, that pouch of coins there might not seem like the fortune it is, but it truly is an unknowable amount of wealth that we have here. So please don't be, uh, you know, wasteful. I think a, a budget of a thousand per cleric would be a nice point, right? We don't want to go way above that. But we agree. We're all in agreement with that, yeah. 1,500 okay. is a probably yeah. our maximum, yeah. And we have a little bit left for transportation and guards and getting them there safely. And my armor, I'd say. And, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get your armor, okay? Just let's get those clerics. Right. I agree. Just, I agree. I, I, before I leave them, I go to Ren and I say, you know, I know we have our moments, Ren, but Keep an eye on the boy and make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Arrakis, I know we have a lot of back and forth. But I wish from the deepest pit of my heart to see you flayed alive. No, I'm kidding. Look, I'm, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, of course, I look after him. I'll, I'll, I'll keep an eye. I'll keep an eye on him. I'll yes, give him a little wink. Saying, well, you know the history here. That's all. Look, on my honor, it will not be human time when we pass through those walls. Very good. All right, well, good luck on chance. Jamie, are you taking the magic sword in the walls with you? I... should I not? I don't know. I just want to know. Might, it's probably nothing. I wouldn't worry it. about it. They might confiscate it. I'll, t I'll, I'll bring it. And if they don't want to take it off me, I'm like, hell no. I won this. This is my dad. That's his. Yeah. And fuck you. Mm -hmm. I bring my bag of holding. Fuck them. Yeah. Um... When the two of you get to the walls, they will insist that you remove any weapons or armor from your person and give them to a friend or let the guards hold on to them for you. I... For the inner walls. Ooh. Yeah. I call Stacy over. I hand mm -hmm. Stacy my halberd. I kind of motion for Arrakis. Like, give it to the girl. You mean Ren? Oh, uh, sorry, I meant Ren, yeah. I Stacy will take all your weapons and armor if you want, but I hold Renatus? night blood and I'm like, there is absolutely no way I'm giving this to no offense, Stacy, the camp girl. Offense taken. Arrakis, <laughs> that is my squire. Or er, sorry. Renatus, that is my squire. She's not the camp girl. Look, you not dishonor her like that. I respect that. I respect that she okay maybe i was i was too harsh i'm sorry i'm very sorry stacy um that was her name right stacy yeah yes okay. <clears throat> stacy i think you'll have to do this one in, on your own um because there's no way or else i'll have to find arrakis and give him this dagger to hold okay fine you stay out here with stacy i'll handle the clerics of course no I can better do yet stacy should go with you i'll hold the weapons and wait for you Good opportunity for Stacy, Stacy, a little, little, to learn some negotiation. I'll, I'll take all the equipment and stuff, and I'll sit, and find a nice, comfy spot to sit beside. I'll get a pipe. I'll start smoking it. There's some benches outside, just for this sort of a thing where people want to wait for their buddy to come back out. Yep. Ooh. And there's a little bar over there is, and a little tea shop. Wait, this is the first time I've held this glaive in a long time. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. So there's like a moment when I'm holding it, and I'll start doing like. It's almost like martial arts katas. It's like the the movements, if you know what I mean, like where you where you mm -hmm. where you do like the. Huh. I'll start like 
practicing with it. Mm-hmm. Can I? What do you, you know, want for a performance? That muscle check? memory is so old; it's so rusty. You know the things you're supposed to do, but your body is not. It's like when you try to have like really nice handwriting, but your handwriting's actually kind of shit, and you can't make the hand do the loop de loops mm-hmm. and the right. Th- it's, and as someone who used to be an expert with this weapon, this must be sort of. It's like trying to impotent. play guitar with a numb hand. Mm. Right? It's like I've been... Totally, it's, yeah. It's like I'm trying to jerk get that off reference. with a numb hand. Stranger? <laughs> I'm sorry, no. <clears throat> it's, like, it's, like, it's like trying to play guitar or an instrument with a numb hand. Or have you ever... Your hands ever get cold and you're typing on your computer and it just it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. It's, just, that, it's, yeah. that, it's like my body just won't do, do the things I wanted to do with it. But... I still want a performance check for how cool. What do you, what do you want me to see how cool I look as I mm. go through? I the want an movies. attack roll. Attack mm. roll. Okay. I want an attack roll. Um, just make a basic attack roll because you're no longer proficient with this weapon. You used to be once upon a time. That's um, not a roll. After all, that's the roll. It's like a ten. That's uh, an eight plus two is a ten. Yeah, that's uh. You would have hit a person in a, without armor on. Nice. Damn. Come uh, on, Stacy. We gotta go inside, and you're yeah. gonna watch me be the master negotiator. As as uh, Ren is sitting there, swinging his like his fucking glaive around, doing his like karate, asses or whatever. A little voice mm-hmm. in his head. He is himself saying. Don't worry, Arrakis. I'll watch the boy and make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. <laughs> As we watch the boy walk into the inner city on his own <laughs> with no one to watch him. Mm-hmm. It'll be All fine. Right, before we go to our next break, two questions. First <laughs> off, Ren, they're going to be in there a while. They're going to be in there for most of the day, finding their way around and talking to clerics and stuff. And right across from you is a tavern, a bar, and a tea shop. Are you going to take this pile of weapons and, and go have a, a couple of drinks and get into your own trouble? Or are you passing your discipline checks and waiting patiently all day in front of the booze? Uh, n- no, what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for like a street urchin and I'll give him a copper and I'll say, you need to find a red robed wizard. Okay. And I'll tell him the, the Provu Palace. And I'll be like, if you can find him and bring him back here to come pick up all this bullshit that I have, um, I'll give you a silver. I give him a copper to send him on this mission. Excellent. Um, Next question is for Growl. He's right here. You want to know, you've got so many questions about who you are, where you come from. This is Holy City Emberstone. This is where all the clerics gather. Mm -hmm. This is like the, the pinnacle of divine worship and knowledge and intuition. If ever you were going to get answers from someone other than that crazy woman in a swamp. Mm-hmm. This would be the place. Mm-hmm. Do you have any, do you have any plans, any designs, any goals? Yeah. So or is it too fucking dangerous in this big city? The talking to the Nadinas clerics the other day, um, when the conversation was heating up, you know, when they were asking about all the spells and all that, um, it was getting a bit uncomfortable, almost. It feels like around every corner could lurk someone who just wants to fucking capture him and kill him. Yeah. Like, he's mm-hmm. always weighing mm-hmm. the curiosity of mm-hmm. trying to find people that can help him versus the paranoia of trying to avoid the people that would capture him or worse if they knew who he truly was. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the goal would be to find... I think the problem is, I think Growl, especially with this group that he's built up and everything, he's definitely more trustworthy of outsiders. He really liked, honestly, Forrest. And um, out of like all the people that he has ever asked about his stuff, only the people who weren't like involved with the system, you know, have ever given mm-hmm. him hope that he might be able to find out because he, he feels that. So... What he would be looking for would be a place that, one, has, like, clerical, magical, divine people that know kind of their shit, especially related to Nadinas, but also maybe ones that aren't, ones that are a little bit more off the cuff, right? 
Mm. Is there like is there like alternative churches? Is there like an underground <laughs> scene? Any like weird mm. mm-hmm. kind of shady places? You know, he's basically looking for the okay. district in the city with like the gay bars. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Well, okay. I, so I was thinking okay. that after after they leave, um, I don't know what does Grau do? Does he wait in the room or would he be like in the in the bar area? Uh yeah, he's still on his like nihilism arc a little bit. He's probably like just hanging out somewhere, staring <clears throat> into a cup of tea and just contemplating how shitty the world is. I think I come and sit next to you and say, uh, well, looks like you and I have got a book these uh carriages bro mm-hmm. i was i was thinking you know um a place like this it's unfamiliar you know i've seen you when you're talking when you get caught off guard you can panic a little bit in conversations maybe you could do some practice you know get used to thinking on your feet a little bit maybe we could go and book these carriages and maybe you could do the talking we're not doing okay. anything wrong so there's not really any risk there but i'll be with you if anything goes wrong but you can go and speak to them and book the carriages or whatever. Practice, like yeah, like singing your spells or yeah, like August just like practices that. His swing, yeah, okay. And yeah. maybe we can look around the city a little bit without these two uh, cramping our style. Yeah, uh, I think that would make me. I think that would make me very comfortable. I, I still don't know about the carriages or which which ones we need when or what or how many, but we can. You can. You can advise me. I can, and I think with you around, I think I'd be. It'll be, be able to do that. Yeah. It'll be easy. Let's. So what we're gonna do is, let's get going. Like, uh, let's yeah. finish your drinks. We're gonna go and find a guard. We're gonna ask the guard where we can book a carriage. We're gonna go where he tells us, and when we get to the carriage, you're gonna tell him that we need transport for one to three people, and it needs to be a nice carriage, like expensive. That's it, basically, and it's going to Papari. Yeah. One to three people, nice carriage. Um, Grau's gonna confidently make his way to um, the what did you say, the guards? Yeah, but and I say, okay, so remember, you're just asking the guard where we can book a carriage. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> Hello, good sir. Citizen? Um, it's quite the nice day we're having, isn't it? The sun is shining sometimes, sometimes it isn't. Is there something I can help you with, sir? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I would be... I, you see, I'm I'm Grau, by the way. Nice to meet you. I, I was wondering if you could help me find a place to book a carriage. A place to... You want... You're looking for transportation? I glance over at Arrakis for one second and say, <laughs> transportation, yes. Looking to transport people with a carriage. Mm-hmm. He, like, looks down the block. Three streets that way. Left side. Look for Curtis's wheels. Curtis's wheels. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh... That that will do with this conversation. Thank you very much. I put, May I ask where you're going? Um. Well, now I'm going to Curtis's wheels. And to where will you be going after you acquire transportation? Um, Papari. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, why don't I walk with you? Uh, you look like you're new to the city. Very new, yeah. I'm from. I want you to get away. lost. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me where you're from. He says he <clears throat> I walk drops his them. toad and walks with you in that direction. You're from far away. Uh, how far? Uh oh, you know it's it's so far. I I, you know I I really I spend most of my life walking. I don't even. It's you wouldn't have heard of the place because I don't really even remember myself. You know. You don't remember where you're from? No, I, it's, it was a long time ago. Pretty unusual. Right. Didn't you say? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Are you from <laughs> the far north? The Arctic lands? You know, I've been asking myself that same very question. 
By the sea? Oh, dear. Uh, by a mountain? Tell me. <clears throat> a great lake. There, there was definitely forests. It's, it's very interesting. Yeah. I know I come from a forested place, too. Oh, mm -hmm. where's that? Yeah, just, just a little bit north of here. A, a sleepy little town called Slumberwood. Slumberwood. Yep. No, I mm -hmm. don't think I'm from there. <laughs> Is it, you... Well, maybe you're from the deep south. Deep south. Palm trees, you know, hot weather, lots of moisture in the air. Oh, I don't... Jungles, pirates. You know, you would think that, but I do... It feels like I would be someone where you would need warm thick clothing, you know? You think you might be from a place where you need thick clothing? Yeah, I think so. I get cold a lot, you know. An interesting game. Uh, don't you... Couldn't you ask your parents where you're from? Uh, well, I I don't... I don't think... I, I don't have any parents, no. Sister? Brother? No, no, I, I don't... Not, not that I... I know of. How old are you, citizen? If you if you don't mind my asking. Oh, you know that's such an interesting question. <laughs> I, sir, I mean this with all due respect. Are you feeling okay today? Oh, I'm feeling fantastic. The sun is out. You know, I'm having a good time. I just had my tea. I'm. I couldn't feel better, really. Well, we've had some issues with memory manipulation. <clears throat> in, oh. around here. Oh. I'm wondering if you might be a victim of identity theft. Memory manipulation does sound like something that is possible <laughs> to happen to someone. <laughs> Do you think you might have lived near the elves? Do you have any experience with elves? They've been known to use their enchantments to warp and twist people's minds for their own uses. Oh, they do? Have you had any experience or dealing with any of the elves? I do think... You know... What, what, how do you say it? If, if there was a bell, it quite likely would be tolling in my head right now. Mm-hmm. There's no mm -hmm. bell in my head. Don't get any ideas. No, of course not. That would be. Um, uh, no, this is this is Curtis's wheels right here. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that if you think that you might have had some sort of mind-altering experience, uh, we can help, and oh, yeah. it would probably help us if we could track down these fireflies who have been manipulating memories and minds to infiltrate establishments like this their own nefarious deeds. What would one do if they thought that their memory might have been manipulated? Well, you can come talk to me or you can talk to any other uh, guard in town or any of the... anyone wearing the symbol of Arasi uh, either. And, and we will get you the help that you need. Mm -hmm. And I also want to let you know that if you think you've if you're afraid to talk to any of the guards or Rossi agents because you have vague memories of having done something wrong, we want to assure you that anything you might have done while under the influence of elven magic will not be held against you and that they sometimes implant false memories in order to keep people from getting help. They are tricksters, these fey folk. Devious monsters that will turn your own thoughts against you. Well, my friend, if I do end up remembering that my mind did get manipulated, then I will be sure to follow your advice. Thank you very much. You're showing all the symptoms. Do you mind if I check in on you um, tomorrow, see if you've changed your mind? I glance over at Arrakis. Just a courtesy call. I don't, the, hello, I, I don't think I can hear me. the conversation right, oh. Neil. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, so um, I... You know... 
how about I come to check back in with you? Well, I'm only suggesting that I check in on you. If your memory's been altered, you might not remember this oh, conversation not, yeah, tomorrow. Of course, yeah. Well, if you are you are you going to be stationed here again tomorrow? Mm. Well, you can tell me where it is you're staying, and I'll come knock on your door. And if you remember me, then everything's fine. And if not, we'll have this conversation again. Hmm. How does he get out of this? <laughs> Um, you know, I think my memory's been very consistent throughout a long time. I doubt that I will forget that this conversation happened. But if I, 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 if I have more questions, I will come check in with you, good sir. All right? Good luck, citizen. Thank you very much, sir. May the gods watch over your feet. And, and uh... over yours as well. With that, the guard will walk I like, away I like without duck. a look over his shoulder. Yeah, I like duck away or like hide behind something as the guard turns around to walk off. And I'll, as he passes, I come back out and I say, well, that seems to go well. I, th I think so. I, You know, he's from the Barassi guys, the, the death yeah. guys. Yeah, they all are around This, this here. guy was not, this was just a city guard. Okay, he yeah. wasn't wearing any Barassi oh, emblems, yeah, yeah. just to be clear. He, but he too, we, we were talking about, you know, memory manipulation and wait what yeah he asked me about because i told him you know that i don't remember some things oh and he said that uh elves <laughs> often do memory manip and there's a lot of people actually that have the memories manipulated you know really yeah um by the elves by the elves or the fireflies now he you told said the me, fireflies yeah but I don't... He said if I wanted help with that, I should check in with the Varasi people. And honestly, I think if I go to them and ask them about it, and then they, I keep talking, they will eventually, you know, find out that I'm a... Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't trust them. But, but um... I think that's... maybe we could find other people that deal with memory manipulation that aren't, you know intent on hunting down and killing fireflies and elves and druids and all that. Yeah, I'm sure there's a wizard in this town that could answer some questions about it, but the thing is, anyone living here, you know, well, you don't know what their views are on on things. You don't know whether they can trust them. Oh, I will say, though, that forest guy, he was keen to understand where you knew him from. Yeah. And if it was the elves and the fireflies that had wiped your memory or something, would he have been so eager to like engage right. with us on that? He might have. He yeah. would have like brushed you off and said, oh, "I'd never seen you before" or something like that. Yeah, I don't. So think, I don't know. I don't think they're necessarily the ones to fear here. We need to. We need to look for people that know more about this memory manipulation stuff that aren't, you know, up there. I agree. It's worth knowing about. Right now, my central thesis is that you've just gained consciousness, and the reason you don't remember anything before is because, you know, you're essentially a different conscious being now, and uh, that's not memory manipulation so much as, well, something more miraculous, really. Like, Yeah. Um... But yeah, it doesn't hurt to explore all the, all the avenues here. Clearly, whatever has happened to you, it's got to be tied in with the Fireflies. It has to be. It's the only thing yes. that makes sense. So the more we can find out about them, the better. And if this guard's right about them manipulating memories, then maybe there is something in that for us to explore. But and all that being said, though, I, I motion at the building in front of it. This looks like a place to hire a carriage, so good job. I, I, tr I tried my best. <laughs> Sorry, um, I cut you I off there. What were you going to say? Well, I really don't like the plan that Ren had of finding a firefly and bringing them to the Empire. But, you know, I do want to find a firefly. Maybe, maybe there's a compromise there somewhere where we both get something that we want. We yeah. should think about I, that. Ren's blood was hot when that was being discussed, he'd just seen his wife and mm -hmm. I'm 
hazard a guess that he'd probably do anything, sacrifice anything to get her back. So he probably did mean that when he said it, but I think he can be reasoned with over time when tempers have cooled. So when we're I, done I, with I, these I clerics. We should talk about this again because it seems like there's some. We do have a goal. We do both have a goal of at least finding a firefly. Maybe we can build something with that. Absolutely, and uh, you know, right now Autumn has all the cards. She's the one with all the information, and we've got nothing. Yeah. We can find the fireflies and speak to them on our own, and we won't be solely relying on her for our truth. All right. With that, why don't we go yeah. to our break? Awesome. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to Mooton. <coughs> Good old buddy, old pal. I'm with, ready. With his best squire, Stacy. You're in the inner city. You're unarmed. You're unarmored. It's just the two of you in your street clothes walking around the much, much smaller inner city. And the buildings here are way taller. There's lots of five and six story buildings. <clears throat> um, and then there are some of these grand cathedrals with spires that just go up forever and huge temples all over the place. And there's this like sacred pit in the very center well next to the very center of the city with like these sloped stones that makes it look like a giant bowl and it collects rainwater and there's like a little spiral staircase that goes all the way down to it and you can see some clerics or some priests or something from the distance you can't really tell what they are going down like pulling some rainwater out of this like giant sacred bowl down here and um it's a big very tall, very old city. Definitely the oldest city that you've ever been in. Okay. Um, what are you doing? How are you going to go about completing your mission? <clears throat> uh, I'm a lot go... of temples. Are the temples all for like the generic gods or are they more like honed in? Is there a temple of Martha? Is there a temple of, you know? There are um, dedicated temples to all the deities and then there are a couple of grand unified temples i'll do the dedicated temples first <clears throat> so i'll go and visit the temple of martha first and foremost mm -hmm. right the temple of martha you know it's just it's massive it's it's got these huge let me change the music it has these huge um domed roofs that just sort of they're gilded with gold and they shine all this reflected light through these stained glass mirrors down on you, bathing everything in this gentle, beautiful, warm, cozy feeling. Oh, if I have an appropriate simple track to, to signify the magnificence of this. Yeah, you walk into the Temple of Martha. You see interlocked golden rings. You see the, the domes above, the stained glass windows. There's a section of the in the, the main hall for people to come and say whatever prayers you want. There's little alcoves all around the sides, each with a different aspect of Martha. Like over here is Martha the mother, then here's Martha the healer, then here's Martha the merciful. Over here is like Martha the forgiver. You know, every, every different iteration of her that you can find every different angle to her that you could think of you'll find an alcove of it to her somewhere around here there's maybe 60 civilians um, worshippers here then there's maybe seven or eight um, people of the cloth who are non-clerics non-spellcasters but they work here they're <clears throat> priests or priestesses of some kind or even just clerical uh, like regular clerics, like someone who does clerical work, but not magical cleric. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I'll call one of them over. Mm hmm Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I'll ask them, is it possible you could get me your head cleric, please? Uh, I have uh, something to the speak head with cleric. about. You, you wish to speak to the head Martha cleric in, in Holy City Emberstone. I'm sorry. Um, they correct. Don't just I'm show ready to make any... a uh, very generous donation. I would even what? be okay to schedule a time. The Grand High Cleric doesn't just 
make appointments willy nilly. Um, could you tell me more about <clears throat> what it is you're looking for? Uh, yes, I work with a uh, very powerful wizard, and we need their we need their expertise on Martha. And this wizard has entrusted me with some money to spend for this wizard to, or sorry, for the cleric of Martha to come and visit us. Which wizard for, is this? I think for a second. Her name is Autumn. Not familiar with any famous wizards named Autumn. I, okay. Uh, we are near the uh, area of Swampside. So we would need um, a cleric of the third, fourth, fifth circle to accompany oh. me. Oh! I can get you in contact <clears throat> with such a cleric. Please wait here. Um, and she'll walk away. <clears throat> Relieved that you're not needing Asking to for speak the ninth with level the... cleric, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the 14th level leader of the Martha church. Holy fuck, 14th level, god damn. Okay, I'm ballparking good. it, I haven't figured out their stats yet. I might take him like yeah. two spells to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is insane, this is like one of the, level 14 is like, it's like god level. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very high. This is Holy City Emberstone, <clears throat> this is the, the center of faith for most folks. So yeah, yeah, the, the head Martha cleric here is gonna be around that level. Um, a little bit later, um, you know, middle-aged gentleman will come out with that same ordinary person, same layman, and she'll point him in your direction. And he'll come on over, leaning on a, a bit of a gnarled oaken staff. <clears throat> He's wearing golden robes with white trim, like little blue accents on him. He'll stop before you and give you a bow, showing the bald spot on his head. I give him a bow. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, my name is uh, August. What is yours? Ah, uh, my name is Father Gregor. How may I serve you? Uh, Lee said you were looking for a... What did she say? A sage to speak with your wizardress? Your wizard? Yes, we're looking for a uh, Martha cleric specifically of the third or fourth circle. Yes. Uh, my wizard would like to talk to you, paid, of course about um, your god. There will be no spell casting involved. Um, it is purely an academic conversation about uh, Martha and her beliefs and life. <clears throat> and um, I'm assuming your wizard does not wish to travel here. Of course not. You know how wizards are in their towers. Mm. But we bit. would be willing to make a handsome donation and pay for all your travel costs. And we have guards who are willing to take oh. you. Is it far? It is near, um... Can you actually give me the name, Neil? It's not Swampside, I know that's... Keygate. Keygate. Yeah, it's um, it's a little bit off the path of Keygate. <clears throat> Hornstead Kingdom. Hmm, he thinks to himself, one, two... Uh, it's, ooh, it's about a month round trip. We have a uh, carriage ready to go for you and the fellow clerics that we're going to be imploring. Mm. Of course, we do undertake missions such as these. I must ask, though, uh, I must let you know it will be expensive. And uh, I must ask the, the nature <clears throat> of your wizard's inquiry. I, I, I understand that it could be expensive. Uh, the nature of her inquiry is between you and me. She is a, um, she is a half elf, I believe and she is curious of the deity's thoughts on the creation of life. Specifically, I'm here to meet and bring back a Martha cleric, a Cheese cleric, and a Nerul cleric to talk about <clears throat> just life in general and creation and an academic way. Isn't that right, Stacey? Well, Stacey nods. Well, part of our mission is help those and part of our mission is to to educate those in positions of power 
this could be a good excuse to go and as you're going through to go and meet my wizard to stop in the cities and meet the lay folk and spread the good word mm Hmm. standard expenses are 40 gold a day plus <clears throat> traveling expenses about 30 days 1200 gold total for a journey of this distance assuming a few days there to speak yeah, 1,200 gold, we will pay for your expenses. Um, 1,200 gold should cover it all. We can pay that. Lee will help you arrange payment. Um, and when it's done, she will come get me. Uh, will you be traveling with me? I believe that we will be dispatching four of our guards with you. <clears throat> we are in need of more clerics. I will probably send you with two or three more. Um, do you think that you could make an introduction, or do you know any of the Chis or Nerul clerics that I could speak to? Nerul? Yes, most certainly. Chis! Hmm. Rounds. Shakes his head pretty abruptly. No, I, I don't think so. Reluna or Nadinus? Nadinus, yes. Oh, perfect. Um, a Reluna, we might have some trouble there. Can you really afford, we each will need our own fees. I, I can't speak for the other temples. My wizard has uh, hefty pockets and 1200 gold to a good cause. She has no problem with it. Splendid, but uh, see Lee about <clears throat> payments and um, we shall make arrangements. Understood. I'll go and talk right. to Lee. Um, I'll ask for the other gods or the other clerics' names to go and visit. Yeah. Um, well, we can do a little bit of hand waving here because the the cleric for Martha, Nerul, and Nadinus can all be found here in Holy City Emberstone, and they will all happily do the same thing. Um, you can just talk around. You can ask. It'll take a day to explore and find all these people <clears throat> and get all the introductions made. Um, but each of them will charge. 1200 plus expenses uh, for those three. That 1200 was including expenses. That was 40 gold a day for 30 days. I guess it should be 28 days technically. Uh, plus traveling expenses. So 1120 and middle class. That's fine. I mean, that's 6,000 gold, right? We'll call it 1250. Yeah. We'll, we'll meet you in the middle. Oh, that's a nice... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. 1250 50 times, times five. So uh, six, well, we can get three at that price. Got it. Which is 3,750 gold. Okay. The last two, Chis and Reluna, can be a little bit harder. The Chis one's going to be easy. Okay. So I'll go talk to them first. <clears throat> Wait, so how much do we pay for Reluna? Um, that's going to be 1250. Well, oh, we're not sure. About we that. haven't gotten to Reluna or Chis yet. Okay, we're not done them yet. No, so uh, no, you're keeping track of the yet. gold move, yeah. I got the gold. Right. Yeah. I am so you go, taking you that off do my cheese. character sheet then right now. Do it. Okay, so we have 6,222 um, gold left. That's a lot of gold. All right. The cheese cleric. Now, the temp there's all these grand cathedrals all over here. You know, they're both competing spires scraping towards the skies. The cheese temple is much smaller than many of the others, much smaller than even some of the, the small gods like Salt and Terrassa. Um, it's this gentle, quaint little temple. It's maybe, it's only one story. Its spires might reach to like the top of a three-story building or something. Um, and it's got these really simple, basic wooden doors with no runes and no metal working on them, even wooden handles on them. It looks very... Um, what's the word? Humble? Like simple, humble, very humble, very simple temple here. And when you open it up, there, there's windows, but they're not stained. And the wooden pews are everywhere. They've got like a little bit of finish on them, but there's not a lot of color. There's not a lot of brightness. It's just, it looks like, you know, a basic, looks like the end of, um, 
Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where he's got to pick between all of the different chalices. And then he finds like that piece of shit wooden cup. And he's like, this is the cup Jesus would drink from. It's sort of that vibe, <laughs> all these beautiful temples. And then you've got this like really yeah. basic bitch <clears throat> wooden cup of a temple. I'll enter um, is what do I There's see inside? A few people here, just a few. Um, you're not seeing the the huge throngs. There's only like you know six or seven. This is the wrong track. Six or seven um, folks visiting. One layman on hand to kind of organize things, and one cleric. Wrong button. Wrong guy. One cleric at the very back of the temple. I'll walk a walk. young to, man directly to the young man cleric. Yeah. I'll hold out a hand. Simple robes. <clears throat> Greetings. Shake your hand. My name is August. And yours? After I get open my documents about this. Excellent. <clears throat> Where is that? I didn't have a name for him. I'm going to look in the... Save or die patron names, NPC names. Here we go. His name is Vane. I see you choose to use your money more wisely than the other temples. <clears throat> I'll just bow his head in, in silent respect. I admire that... Uh... You guys choose a humble lifestyle. Where I was from, we followed Chis, and I can't say the same. So it is nice to see a different path. Bows his head silently again. <clears throat> Looking for um, a cleric of Chis to accompany me on a journey to my wizard. She is interested in talking about uh, the aspects of beauty and life. Uh, it would be paid, of course. I have already recruited a cleric of Martha, of Narul, and Nadinus. And we are looking for a cheese cleric and a uh, cleric of Reluna. Jake's head. Is... Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> is there any reason, sir? Sort of gesture around and then say very simply... My work is here. I understand. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, if there's no way to move you, then I won't uh, make it unnecessary or uneasy. It is a lot of gold, and I know sometimes that smooths things over, but if your resolve is your resolve, then I will not pester you anymore. Very, like, pleasant, happy, like, I, I understand <clears throat> you and you understand me. Yep. Smile will grace his face. And he will bow again. I'll bow and I'll leave. Okay. I'll go to the cleric of Reluna. All right. <clears throat> um, now these events we're doing all in an order, uh, but it's a big city. There's a lot going on. There's lines. There's all sorts of shit. Oh, yeah. So these are this is probably going to happen over a span of a couple of days. Um, but we're just going to knock it all out right now, rather than you know slow dragging you through everything. Um, <clears throat> Reluna, goddess of passion of um you know boiling blood let's call it sometimes you can come into her grand temple and right away you're struck by the amount of red that these people use it's like they only have <clears throat> one fucking palette and everything is a shade of red or you know maybe a gold to go with it over here or there uh, you've got this dais that's carved to look like a giant rose that circles and spirals out from the center of the main stage with some big metal thorns coming off of it and these beautiful like wooden pews that are this you know red wood like, I do everything in red with little uh, iron spikes that come off of it in such a way that like if you were to sit in the pew you could sit comfortably but if you shift your legs left or right you might be bumping into spikes um, and along the floor, there are specific footsteps, paths that you can follow, lots of different ones, but in between them, there are these like awkward bumps and, um, you know, not, not dangerous spikes, but like, triangular pointed 
stones that would make it awkward and uncomfortable to walk around. The would architecture coming, is semi-hostile. Would people coming here to like get the goddess's blessing ever do the where they get on their knees and like crawl across the floor like up as like um you know you're in pain. Mm. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about? Mm. Yes. Yes, that okay. if you were passionately in love with someone and they didn't love you back, you might put yourself in some level of discomfort as a way of showing your devotion or your how much you care before you make your prayers. That's one of the, the common themes throughout this region is that if you want the blessing of a god, you've got to show them how much you care and you can do that by expending resources or by suffering a little bit yourself. <clears throat> or making offerings or sacrifices or all sorts of things. Um, any way to show the gods that you are devout or that you care or that you would work for your your deeds. I will uh, do that. Is a good um, way. <clears throat> I'll ask Stacy to hold my gear. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of like strip down into just regular clothing. And I'll mm -hmm. make the pilgrimage of uh, crawling and going through the steps. Excellent. Yes, you can crawl up towards the dais. There are three clerics up there dressed in robes of Reluna with roses on either lapel. And they watch as you crawl towards them. This temple has maybe 15 worshippers here, a couple of laymen. I'll make a uh, prayer to Reluna, asking <laughs> for her to sanctify uh, my mission. I'm... <clears throat> very passionate about this i'm trying to get you know this is a stepping stone i feel like in my future um if mm -hmm. i do this and we do it well then autumn is going to help us and then i'm going to be able to go back home and see what's going on there and bring back my uh uncle's true love mm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. so make my prayer i will get up off my feet and or off my knees and i will walk over to the three clerics standing together Mm-hmm. Um, they will see you as you crawl up. Their hoods are up in that sort of semi-menacing way. Um, and looking down at you, one will take a kind of a squat nearby you and say, What brings you here, young lord? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Where do I begin? <clears throat> say the thing that most brings me here is probably my need for a cleric to come with me and talk to my wizard. That hardly seems a matter for the goddess of passion. Well, I guess there's a reason of why I'm needing that. And that's a longer story. <clears throat> Maybe you'd be interested in hearing about it on our way? Move me if you wish me to move with you. I'll whisper into his ear. <clears throat> my whole family is dead, and my uncle's wife is now the queen of an area, and they cannot be together unless I do this for the cler for the wizard. <clears throat> and he'll get, like, choked up a Your bit. Your uncle's wife... My... has become queen to another man. And the only way you can save your uncle's wife is if I or my brothers and sisters meet your wizard? It would be a uh, first step on a long journey, I think, but it would save my aunt, yes. She's Why not only his wife. Why don't you go save her yourself? Why do you need this wizard? Are you afraid? It's not really about fear. It's about making sure it's done correctly. If I went there with my horse and my uncle, I could kill a few guards. But I definitely couldn't save her. This is what I think is the correct path in order for me to be able to save her. Eric stands up and shakes their head. Send me a man who feels strongly about this, and I will speak to them. You... Um, 
your heart is not in it. Thank you. And I will uh, go out. I will go to Renatus <clears throat> and inform him, Ren, I couldn't convince the cleric of uh, Reluna to come with us. <clears throat> they said to send me a man whose heart is in it. And I think that uh, you might be the one who needs to go and talk to them. Reluna? Is she the one of passions? None. Royce, sounds good. <clears throat> that that urchin never did come back with my copper coin. Here, I'll <laughs> hand him all, all the stuff. I'll take the stuff. I'll hold on to it. Then I'll sit in the same spot that you sat and wait. And I'll, I'll, I'll say to him, and, and which way is the Reluna temple? Uh, you can give him directions. Hold on. I want to roll a wisdom check to know if I see if I know. Oh, natural 20. Yeah, I right there. It's, you know, two streets up to the right. And then you're going to go through a little alley. And then once you're through the alley, there's a little door and you're going to follow that door. But then on the other side, that's the temple. <clears throat> two streets up on the right, through the alley, on the door, and then the temple. Okay, got it. Right. Right, I'll see it a few. And uh, I'll potter my way through the extremely thick gates into the inner holy city, carrying no weapons of anything, of any description. Hopefully passing mm -hmm. through the guard mm -hmm. posts without any obstructions. No incident. Easy peasy. And I make my way towards the temple of Reluna, following the instructions of... <clears throat> Following the instructions of my nephew August, perfectly, I will make my way to the temple. And As you approach the temple, you'll see the signs of Reluna, goddess of passion, all these roses, all these, you know, there's a pair of rings, not like interlocked rings like Martha, but like wedding bands. There's some, you know, graphic depictions of people mid coitus uh, here and there. And there's pictures of scenes from like popular poetry or, and stories. Like, um, if it were in the real world, you'd see the scene from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, where Romeo and Juliet are both like dying in the crypt because of their misunderstood passions for each other. You see these sort of markings and, and reliefs across the walls of the temple. And before you go in and talk to anyone, I just want to ask Renatus how. I mean, ostensibly, you are here as one of the steps on the path to get your wife back. Um, and does it, does he feel anything when he sees these markings of her? These things that might remind him of his wife? I think... Renatus sees these things. And... They do make him think of his wife. Um, the passion that is between them. The... But not just sort of a... Not just passion, but also the... The entirety of their physical relationship. The idea that they've had to have been mm. apart. Like, when you live with someone and you wake up next to them, there's a sort of comfort and you know if you, if you asked Renatus like what do you think of your wife um, oh, you know how much do you like your wife he, he would say like I'm one of the luckiest men of the world and I have the great fortune of spending a large percentage of my time with the most beautiful woman in the world um, he would say something to that effect um, mm -hmm. these images <clears throat> they evoke a gentle longing in his heart that had been quiet for a mm. long time in the way that somebody who is forced to be apart from somebody has to push them down to keep them quiet to keep themselves sane right but now that he has seen his wife now that he has spoken to her now that he has touched her um these images have a greater effect on him than they have in the past um mm -hmm. And there is definitely, like, a injection of some emotion into him in the form of longing 
redoubling his efforts, determination, and wanting to succeed to see and free and be with his wife. Okay. Well, it's with that look upon your face or buried within you that you enter the temple to Reluna, grand temple to Reluna. And just as August saw this, you will see three clerics in the dais on the far back side, the semi-hostile architecture with little thorns and spikes and uncomfortable stepping stones surrounding you, making ordinary access to this temple a, a bit of a trial, a mild trial, but trial nonetheless. Okay. Three clerics. Um, what do I know? Who who am I supposed to approach? I, I guess I approach. I, I make my way forward to whoever I think looks important. You head down the center of the aisle. You head right up to those three clerics. Um, and they're standing there, and the way that. In the way that like villains in movies would stand where they're just like hanging out at the top of the dais and there's people doing their prayers and the, these three people are just standing like one next to another observing but not actually interacting or talking just kind of presiding over everything with like straight backs and stern faces. You can walk right up to them. There's no one in between the two of you or the four of you. You can speak whatever you want to them. Um, I was told... What of you seeks a man with passion? Or a love story? Men of passion speak, seek us. What is it that you desire? I need to get my wife back. My nephew was From here earlier. Hmm. He Your wife is queen? You? She is. And you miss her. You miss a memory. You miss things. Not having her is a hole in my soul. Like the death of someone close to you, made worse knowing that they still live and you cannot be with them. What would you do for this woman? I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what haven't I done? Name it and I have done it. I've killed, I've stolen, I've risked my life, I've bled. I've fought, I've lived in dirt, I've snuck, I've crawled, I've hoped. And you think bringing one of us to see your pet wizard would be the solution to all your ills, would get your wife back in your arms if we were just to speak with your friend after some travel time that's that's going to solve your problems no but it's one step closer it's a lot of steps right it's not just the last step only the first of many are you sure you were willing to undertake such a journey the first step is going to be hard and it's going to be costly you really have it in you to see this all the way through can't you find another Look me woman? in the eye and tell me I don't have it in me. There's a lot of women in this world. Look me in the eye and tell me I don't have it in me. Our costs you are tell enormous. Me. You could buy love tell much me easier. I don't have it in me. Look me in the eye and tell me and I'll kill you where you stand. thousands of gold it would cost to hire us would surely slake your thirst for contact 
could surely buy you the love of many good people. What good would an empty vessel Why this do? One? Why do men throw their lives away for love? Why do men do anything for love? For sure, if I were a purely rational man, of course what you say would be true. But I don't just crave the flesh. I don't just crave love. I crave her above all else. We've asked around after your nephew visited. I've spoken <clears throat> with the Martha cleric known as Father Gregor. I know your pockets are deep, but our costs are enormous. As you have said yourself, what would one not do for love? And if you truly love this woman, and if this is so important to you, costs are five times what that man offered, what that man demanded. Why? Are you sure you have what it takes? Why are they five times more? Because we only work with people that actually mean what they say. We only work with the people who would do the ridiculous for those that they love. We don't dabble with half-assed whiners. We don't dabble with people who throw money at their problems. You want... What do you want? You don't want money. What do you want? Tell me. We want to know the depths of your heart, and we want to set you on a path that you cannot turn back from. I'm already on that path. Five times the cost. It's 200 gold a day. That's 5,600 gold plus travel expenses. <sighs> that is an enormous sum, an unreasonable sum. No sane man would pay such a sum for a single visit. If I that had it, amount, I would pay it. Would you kill for it? Would you fight for it? I have killed it? for it, and I have fought and for make it. make the money. Bring it to us. Do the ridiculous. We will do what you want. Merluna will bless your journey. Uh, I'm just doing like quick math on my head. We've already paid 3,000. 3,750. Like that, you paid 1,250 times 3, 3,750. We have the mm -hmm. gold. We have the money yeah, to cover we, it. But then we, we have, have no money left for cheese. Right. The cheese cleric doesn't want money, but I'm not sure what they want yet. <clears throat> I'll go talk to cheese. Well, listen. You're going to leave these people in the middle of this conversation? No, no, no. I okay. mean, like, after this. I'm not here, so I'm not officially saying this. That's fucking insane, 6,000 gold. Neil's right, no sane man would pay that. Done. 5,200, yeah. Done. Done. <laughs> Done. We have the gold. Oh. Well, they will go with you and count out the gold, I assume. Mooton handed you the bag of holding. Um, they yeah. will take your payments. Mm. And um, they will look at you after you've put down five... 1,200 gold. That's that's half a million in real world currency. I'll give I'll that's give one lot. of them a wink and I'll say that was a bargain. <laughs> but... The one that you say that to will remove from their neck an amulet of Reluna. And they will place it over yours and give you a gentle, you know, like greeting kiss on the side of the cheek and say, Reluna will watch your journey. She will see what is in your heart. If you are truly the man of passion you claim to be, she shall be your shield, your sword, and the horse between your legs. 
Perfect. I, uh... I could use an ally in this endeavor. And I'm glad to have the watchful eye of Reluna over me. And I know she will be pleased with me. Oh, hello? You can arrange... Oh, yeah. You can arrange all the, the travel and transportation. We're going to just hand wave. We, we don't need to talk about it. Perfect. Um, and you can head back out to the rest of the city. I make my way to the Chief Temple. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's right there. It's this small, cute, wooden, you know, city little temple. Okay, now, remind me about Chief. Chief is all about appearance, right? Beauty, appearance, yeah. Yeah, it's... Appearance can be somewhat misleading. It's the way things appear, which is also beauty and it's grace and it's, you know, fashion, but it's also, they don't like to talk about it. You would never phrase it this way because it's about appearances, but it's also lies and deception and showing up as if you own the place when really you're just a beggar off the street who's like trying to present a good front. It's, it, it, she's the God of the way things appear to be, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, okay how am I looking by the way am I still in my silver fox era am I looking good uh, yeah you got dressed up pretty nice before your thing with your wife and then you got wounded but you've been healed since then and you've just been walking since then you haven't really been in you've only been in that one fight so you're, you're looking pretty dapper okay perfect I make my way into the temple of cheese and mm -hmm. Chief is our god. Like, oh, yeah. Not yeah. like some people, it's <clears throat> like Martha is our god, <coughs> Chief is our god, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, like I'm a follower of Martha. And they like have like a little copper fucking like Martha thing. It's like, ah, oh, you mm -hmm. know, Martha Desu, I love Martha. No, 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 no. Chief is our god. She like mm -hmm. she belongs to us as much as we belong to her. That is the mm -hmm. god of House Nefarious. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I walk in there like it's my fucking home. Like I belong wow. here. There's this this young man standing at the, the end of this small temple. Relatively small temple made out of plain wood. Is there anyone else in the temple? Yeah, there's a couple of other patrons gone off to each of the little alcoves that have different representations of Chiefs. Yeah, I don't go straight to the altar. Uh, I make my way to these sides and I greet the other patrons. If, they're, if they look amenable to being greeted, I'm not going to have a very extensive yeah. conversation with them, but this is for show for the cleric. Um, mm hmm I am going to greet them in a fashion of a noble who is like greeting someone who is visiting their house. Being like, oh, welcome, mm. welcome to the Temple of Chief. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm kind of doing this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm being very polite. I'm, I'm asking them some very light questions. And I'm like, well, you know, oh, really? Have you been doing that? Okay, perfect. Yeah, well, enjoy your day. Uh, good luck with your praying. And, you know, and then I'll move on. Mm -hmm. and I'll slowly make my mm -hmm. way towards the. Um, the actual cleric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after a few minutes, maybe tens of minutes, you make your way to the cleric. You've greeted the other people, acted as if it's your own. The cleric will see you and give you a, a welcoming smile and a polite bow. I am using full etiquette. I give him an extremely polite bow. Um, polite to the point of I'm making myself seem important but subservient in the sort of sense of like, Kind of like the way a big dog might roll over for a little dog, but like mm. everyone knows who the big dog is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I um, see it. And I say, Greetings. Uh, House Nefarious requires um, the help of a cleric of cheese. Um, we've arranged transportation if you would be on your way. 
Cleric just shakes their head. I say, what's the matter? They point, gesture to the building around them, and simply say, my work is here. Hmm. Is there another who follows Chis of a similar rank as you in the city? Gentle, no, of the head. I understand. I need you. My quest cannot be completed without you. House Nefarious, House Nefarious is the greatest sponsor. Has many clerics of cheese. <laughs> would, would it were that House Nefarious had all but two living members? Our house is in shatters, in tatters, in ruins. All dead, slaughtered by the hand of a tyrant. You're the only one who can help us now. All I need is for you to have a conversation with a wizard. And... When we restore House Nefarious, we will restore Chis to her rightful place in Vantus. Long, slow pause as the cleric <clears throat> guards you, looks to the ground, sort of in a in the way that you you would if someone more important than you is talking at you and you, you don't know what to say and you're kind of like looking down in a way. Back up at you again with a... House Nefarious has many clerics of cheese. Are you sure you are asking this of me? I am sure. You are a cleric of cheese, right? Or are you just... I'm not your cleric? No. You're not. Are you... But you could be for a while. Are you giving up? On... Your home? Absolutely not. Would it not be more proper to pull from those resources that belong to you? Would that not be the way things should be? It is. You are 100% correct. I've been living in exile for five years. My... My honor needs restoration. My image has been tarnished. And without the help of you... I cannot restore myself or Chief in the Vantus Empire. Would your image be helped or hindered by seeking outsiders? Right now my image does not exist because the world thinks I'm dead. It's a powerful image. When the time comes, my reveal 
will be immaculate. My blade will gleam like a thousand beautiful maidens. And my speech will be as soft as the whisper on a wind. Graceful, poised, simple and beautiful. And what will your people think of you for calling upon those foreign to your lands? What will that say about who you are that in your moment of need to abandon, turn your back upon great patron, House Nefarious. Well, some would think that it means I have forsaken the ways of House Nefarious. Others would find the true meaning, meaning that I am willing do anything. You would appear a desperate man. Is that In the image you wish stories, to create? Heroes, if they fail rather than succeed, would just like like desperate men. But if they succeed, they look like heroes. There will be no one to tend the temple in my absence. What do you mean? I cannot abandon I'll, this I'll place. Look I am of Chief. I can tend your temple in your stead. You would stay here until my journey is done? Of course. Chief's temple How must far? be open. How far is this place you wish me to go? It is in the just beyond the Devouring Marsh near Keygate. You're familiar with the Hornstead Kingdom. That's almost a fortnight away. Correct. You would stay here three ten days? I would stay here as long as it took even if you never came back. Because I cannot be seen to forsake my word. Hmm. Hmm. Come back in three days' time. Let me think. Very well. I thank you for your time. The cleric bows politely. No more words. Yeah, I make my way out of the temple. Oh. You exit the temple. I We're going to assume that you, you return and you can tell the other party members about what's up. Is there anything in particular you would like to alter about your story or are you going to be straight with them? I'm going to be straight with them. I'm going to tell them exactly what happened. Um, but before I head back, I'm going to find the poorest, smallest, crappiest temple in the place. That was it. The Temple of Chiefs was the poorest, smallest, crappiest temple. Oh. That was the one. Well, never mind then. Okay. Excellent. Uh, party, we can meet back up at Pruvo's Palace 
And, um, you know, it's a hopping, busy place. Everyone's sitting down, having a beverage, talking about what's been going on. We're on like day three of being here in the area. <clears throat> and in comes Renatus. But we should also do monthly expenses real quick. Uh, someone's got cash. Someone's got 109 gold for monthly oh, expenses. Fuck. Yeah. Yes. I'll take it off the party sheet. All right. Excellent. Nice. 10K gold. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So how we much have do we have? Nine hundred and thirteen gold left, lads. All right. Perfect. You know what? That's you got so much money. You're fine. I'm so rich. How, how can that be? You're muted, was... Nick. Oh. How can that be? Right. Twelve fifty times three. That's three thousand seven hundred fifty. And then six thousand for the Reluna clerks. She said five thousand was... ish or something. He said. He said five thousand seven hundred. I don't remember. Oh, exactly. It right. was. Yeah. I you my math is not. Long. I'm going to tell you right now. My math is not wrong. Okay. Good. We've got 900 gold on that. That's pretty. It's worked out quite well. Convenient. How much did you say full plate was again, mate? <laughs> it's 900, <laughs> but I and wouldn't say we're out perfect. of the. We're not I'm out of the weeds yet. We have 913, and that's after paying our monthly expenses, paying all the people, and not paying cheese yet, technically. But I'm not sure. It's if they'll like need it's faith, isn't it? Yeah, right. Um, okay, so I guess we're downstairs in the in the tavern. We're all waiting for Ren, right? Like, so I think originally me and Grau were waiting for. Yeah, this is a few days later. You. We'll we'll kind of check back in on some of the things you've been doing in those three days. Yeah. Um, but I do want to have the conversation where Renatus shows up and he tells everyone that he just spent five thousand two hundred gold on the cleric of Reluna. Well, yep. that's what I was saying. I think we're waiting in the tavern. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. August comes back, and now we're all waiting. And then a, a day later, Ren comes back. So you probably walk into the busy tavern. We're all sit there, had a couple of drinks, maybe eating some food. Did you get them, Ren? I got them. You got ah. them? Well, uh, you're the Ren. cost us uh, 5,000 gold, and Keith <laughs> is thinking what? over. 5,000? That a lot? That's what the... What the money was given to us for is... It's what it costs. What it costs to get my wife back, Arrakis. What's this got to do with your wife? What? I don't... understand. Don't you That's remember why we're money. doing this quest? So, Autumn, you know, she wants us to do her research or whatever. Yeah. And she's going to arrange a meeting, okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and then, goals. and then we can nab a member of the... Um, Foresty losers or whatever they're called, the and we can flies. hand them over, and boom, we get a meeting with my wife, and we can we can have her back. We can make her go and disappear on the way yeah. home. We're not gonna hand over anyone to anyone. We're all getting a little ahead of ourselves here, so just to get this straight, we've we've sourced all of the clerics, we've spent all the gold, but. Only Cheese hesitated. Um, she said the, the the cleric of Cheese said they need three days to consider. Um, I offered to. There was only one cleric of Cheese here, and I offered to tend the temple in their stead. What? For the whole month? Of course. That's what it takes. Sure. Well, I I, I have things to be looking into in the city. I mean, I don't mind staying here. Well, it's fine. I didn't, didn't have you paid as a priest, though, Run. Aren't you... Well, I mean... Chief is our god. We studied under her and only her in uh, Castle Valens... I don't want to get the name wrong. One sec. Valenscar. Valenscar. Yeah. Um, I see. Uh, sure... Are you guys not going with the clerics to the tower? Don't you want to know? I will be going with the clerics. Don't worry, Renatus. I'll be going okay. back to the tower. Yeah, Arrakis can, Arrakis can stay here with me. That sounds... I'll stay here. I'll stay Seems in the city. fine. He can study in the city. Yeah, maybe we can get him a better disguise. <laughs> I need to wait for my robes to be uh, finished anyway. Are you oh, sure you want to stay in the city, Arrakis? Yeah, you know, maybe... It's always cumbersome Seems to risky. travel with others for me. And uh, here, at least I know I'll always have a room to hide if I need to sleep. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of good meat pies here. And 
you know, maybe it'll be good for me to be in the city with people and not in the forest all the time. What do you think? Wait, so you're, are you saying that August will go alone? Or are you suggesting that you stay with Ren and I, I go with August? You, could you should with come August. with me. It's kind of dangerous for you here, right? Wait, what? Why is it dangerous for Arrakis here? I mean, I'll whisper to you, because he's fucking wanted, Renatus. Yeah, but no one knows. There's wanted posters everywhere. Nobody yeah, would expect him here. to be in the city. Come on. I thought okay. so, but, but... But, listen, August, I won't let you travel on your own. I can go back with you if you want. I was hoping to do some research, though, so I might not be much company. I don't mind traveling with the clerics alone and being on my horse with Stacy and the other four guards. I think I'll be fine. Can we not? Um, you three could stay. stay. We could all stay in the city now. I mean, Stacy and the, the the other men can escort these clerics. I'm sure they're all quite handy in a fight. We I need to make sure roads. that it's done. It's I will. Safe. I have no reason to stay here. I would go with them. I, I Yeah, I will. I, I, I think maybe. I mean, at least one of us should go to make sure things go to plan. I can go with them. It is fine. If you guys want to stay here, then the more the merrier. And I feel like Grau has conversations to have with, I mean, Autumn after after she meets with those clerics. I have another conversation with Autumn at the moment. Maybe we should go to like a quick break here to talk about it because there's a thing I want to bring up. Okay. All right. right. Quick break. We'll be back. Quick break. Okay. So we've paid the gold. We're talking about how we might want to split the party up on the way back. I guess we come to uh, August. If you would be going alone, I could come along with you either way. I don't. don't Yeah, you can come with me, and you can stay in my tent. Yeah. Anything. uh, It could be nice for you to talk to the clerics of uh, life, the good clerics who don't seem to be under the Verasi Empire. It seems. Okay, that sounds nice, actually. Yeah. And then I can keep Ren company here. Uh, I can do some reading. And what re- what spells are you going to research, Arrakis? <laughs> Let me make sure you're going to get the good ones. <laughs> Sorry, would you like to um, would you like to tell me which ones you think are the ones worth researching? Well, now? that phantasmal killer one that the lady was talking about sounds pretty good. Do you think if I could learn phantasmal killer, I'd still be here talking to you? You'd be long gone by now. What about um? What about like a fireball? Or, you know, uh, Meteor Storm? <clears throat> it's not my style. It's I'm just saying... Dis- it's a bit too destructive. I mean, you can you tell I try and keep to myself. Throwing Ooh, balls of fire could around. Could you make, like, like exactly shadowy that. tendrils? About... Like, grab people? How about invisibility? Mm, invisibility. Well, that's one of the things I wanted to look into while I was in the city. It's notoriously hard to come by such a spell. Well, I take uh, credit if you learn that one. Let me see. I'll uh, I'll talk you through the options. Maybe you can help me come to some <laughs> conclusion. Okay. So what I was thinking is learning a spell called Deep Pockets, which will uh, that like that bag of yours. It will enchant the pockets of a robe, so that um, all of the pockets are like that bag. You know, larger on the inside than on the outside. That sounds amazing. The problem is you've got to recast hmm. it every single day. Don't. Don't speak to me about the spell. I was there when that spell was written, okay? No room used that <laughs> spell so much. True, uh, yeah, no, exactly. No, it I, sounds good. Speaking, speaking of the bag of holding, there's one very small point that I forgot to make. When... Go through the gate. When August and Renatus went through the gate to the inner city with the bag of holding, your pack felt 15 pounds lighter while you were walking through the gate to the inner city. And then once you got on the other side your pack returned to the plus 15 pound weight that it was. But nothing spilled out. <clears throat> Correct. Perfect. Interesting. It's a nice cat you got there. Thank you. He's he's beautiful. We call him Pretty Mr. Pan. <gasps> We're going to write an entire child's book based on him. Pretty <laughs> Mr. Pan's big adventure. Pretty Mr. Pan pals around. Pretty Mr. Pan's big nap. Wait. Does he Sorry. champion the, the ginger puller of cats? Is he a Well, he's technically a cream tabby. Um, he oh. doesn't have the one brain cell problem that orange tabbies that my cat have. Has, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's actually quite smart. Unfortunately, too smart. Yes. Mm. 
Um, there really just is. I just really don't have access to that many spells. Moot is the thing. Um, no, I was just giving you shit in game as a as August yeah, yeah. who wants you to learn the the crazy spells that he hears about. You know Evocation that you obviously spells. can't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He hears like about the phantasmal killer spell, the meteor storm. He hears people use fireball, and he's just like, learn those. Well, phantasmal killer, that's that's illusion. So we can we can get that. We can one we can get that one. That's yeah. fourth level spell. I think it's fourth level. Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Grau, it's decided you'll come with me and the clerics and um, Melvin Nelly is your name. I give her a look. Uh, Rudy. Yep. Oh, Rudy. Melvin, Stacy, Rudy, and you four. You're with me and Grau. We're going to be escorting the clerics um, hopefully three and a half days from now when the cheese cleric gets back to us. Excellent. I'll be right back. i got to go um, visit a blacksmith. The cheese cleric will, after three days, you can go back and they will say, if you were going to stay and watch the temple, um, then they'll hand you some like cheese robes and amulets. You can do a good job of doing a good job. Um, and they'll need a thousand gold for expenses. We can offer them nine hundred and thirteen. Uh, Expensive fucking adventure, should, boys. You should have plenty. One two five zero times three plus five two zero zero. I had to take out our monthly plus... expenses. Ah, okay. Well, I doesn't someone have money? There should be hundreds of gold floating around this party. I, I we scraped together. I've got what's two hundred silver and thirty gold. What's that? There's tons of money. How much are you missing, gold? Moot? Uh, I'm gonna if if he has fifty gold, then I'm gonna be missing. Uh, Wait, no, ten silver second. is one gold, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you had two hundred silver. Two hundred. Yeah, so I only have fifty gold. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna be missing. Sorry, one second. Nine six three minus one thousand, thirty-seven. I give you the thirty-seven gold in silver and copper. So I'm taking. What, how much you need in total? Um. So in total, yeah, I'll, give you, minus I'll, I'll chip in seventeen. Okay. <laughs> okay. I need. I need eighty-four gold in total right now. Eighty-four gold in so total. So you're chipping right in now. seventeen. I can give you fifty gold with no skin off my nose. In. All right. I need seventeen more gold. Uh, Grau scours his Grau fucking. Have any money? Grau scours his <laughs> pockets. Grau looks at his empty pockets. Let's see. <laughs> Shit, Grau actually has fourteen gold I and have, gold and silver. I have fourteen gold. Yeah, he they just fall out of his pockets. All right, fine. I, no, I can't stand to see Grau giving up his last coins. <laughs> How much is left? Fourteen gold. Seventeen. Yeah. Can we get a gold check on on Nick? Neil, can you click on his card sheet and tell us? You stay off my card sheet. I, I, I take four of Grau's gold coins and put it into the pot, and then I give him the other ten back, and then I put in uh, 13 more. Okay, then take it off oh, your sheet, and we are out of gold. We just have a bag of holding. But we're going to need monthly expenses at the end of this month, so figure out where to get 96 gold while we're gone. <sighs> How much gold did you take from Grau? He took four. Okay, okay I'm just going to drop your silver, Grau. Yeah, leave you with perfect. ten gold. All right. I look longingly money. at the blacksmith. Oh, next money time. is acquired. Money is paid out. Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, there's some other things that have been happening in the city, right? We've been here for about a week. Or we have to be here for a week for Arrakis to get all of his clothes uh -huh. all nice and pretty. But we've been here for about three days now. So one, two. Oh, my calendar. Well, I'm um, one trying to learn deep pockets. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you need how to are you trying to learn pen deep pocket? Oh, you... spell. The one that's like With all... spell. Though. Avar, it's, it's black four. tentacle. It's level four as well. Perfect. Excellent. We'll get there eventually. Um, I'm getting that one. So deep pockets is what level? Second? Second level spell, yeah. So it'll take you 2d2 two days? Four okay. days? Three or four? And you gotta yeah, roll for it? it? I gotta roll, yeah. It's... <laughs> so yeah. you got the thing made before you Go roll? Ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted the new robes anyway. This is going to be I a thought, classic one. I thought, right. I'll just get them. And then when I learn the spell... You'll just so, so what's well. your percent chance to learn the spell? It's only 50%. It's 50 you either do or you don't. It's always 50. Wait, because it's not a shadow spell, is it, Neil? Can the, 
Can the pockets oh, be shadowy? Probably. Yeah, can they uh, be shadowy? They're not marked. Shadowy. They can't be shadowy pockets, are you sure? Uh, unless one of the books specifically calls them out as a shadow mage spell, they're not a shadow mage spell. No, I understand that, but what if I cast it in a shadowy way? Fuck you, is what he's saying. <laughs> okay, I'll roll the dice, it's 50%. Do you want high or low? I want low on this one. Oh! Classic. Right. It's alright, fine. We don't <laughs> like the it. Get next You're gonna love it. It's a shit, shit spell anyways. It is a shit spell. spell. I didn't even want it, really. <laughs> you would have to, like, take everything out of your pockets at night, yeah, refill them in the morning. It's a shit yeah. spell. Like that right, so clearly you're spending a lot of time um, in amongst yourself practicing and, and reading and learning. Mm. Um, we've got everyone else some time to kill here. Renatus, what are you doing with your extra time? Okay, so how long does it... That was a fun question. How long does it take me to tend to the Temple of Cheese? <laughs> what, what are the opening times? Ah, yeah. Well, the opening time is... Take their money. <laughs> Appearances matter, right? Cheese is all about how things appear to be. So you got to be there at first dawn to open the doors for all the people who, you know, show up early because showing up early makes a difference when you're going to go visit a god. Like, that's a good thing. Yep. Um, but also people who might not want to be seen visiting the Temple of Cheese, they also need to be taken care of. So the after the sun sets time needs to be tended to. Uh, the first couple hours after sunset. Um, and then the chiefs needs a, a window of availability where pretty much anybody can show. So I think you've got like two hours in the morning, two hours after the sun sets, and then like two hours in the middle of the day. Oh, it's an easy uh, life. Perfect. Yeah, it's only six hours of work a day, plus, you know, behind the scenes stuff, because there's always, you know, half an hour on either end of those. So two, three, four, like five hours, you know, two, four, six, seven. Yeah, it's like, nine hours of work a day um yeah totally uh you know i spend the rest of my day trying to hustle make a little bit of money uh i do a little well, bit of gambling on, we've got we've got 30 i don't know if we're just talking about the first week but me and you have got 30 days in the city together on our own i feel like before, we should try and do some before stealing. anyone leaves the city okay is what oh, we're talking about people leave? While, while we're just waiting for the robes to be done before all the clerics get up and go um what are, how are you killing time in town? Oh, I'm scoping out targets to pick pockets, baby. I'm here to make Got money. It. We just shelled Got out it. big time. So you're walking around, talking to people, looking where the fancy folks live, getting a lay of the land for all the temples and the fineries and the jewelry stores. You're mm -hmm. spending some time learning the city. Love it. Love it. Why don't you give me an intelligence check and a charisma check and a perception check? Boom. You just have to do well Boom. on one of these. Yeah, Boom. you got one. Perception. Okay. Whoa, you got one of them. You got one. Excellent. Listen, everything right, is a dumpster. We're going to come stat. back to you later. Yeah. True. We'll come back to you later. In the meantime, Arrakis, we know that you're spending a lot of time learning spells. What about you, Mr. Mooton? What mm. is uh, August doing? You've got a squire. You've got two camp followers. You've got four warriors, some dogs, a horse, and your own desires. What, what do you... What you doing, Prince? Aug yeah, Prince, thank you. Uh, August is going to go visit two things. He's going to take Stacy to the Cheese Temple and have mm -hmm. her uh, pray and mm -hmm. hang out there. And mm -hmm. he's also going to go and visit the Noble Tavern. Mm. The nice, rich, fancy Noble Taverns, of which there are many. Now, do you want to do a Noble Tavern on the inside city or the outside city? The inside, of course. Of course. Okay. And I'll ask Grau if he wants to come with me, or if he wants to do his own thing. I'll give him an invitation. Um. I'll come along. It's in the we're inner city. You're going to have to pass oh, wait, through this those. Is, this is oh. where I have to pass the thing? Yeah, I can't. Then I would take yeah. him to the outer city. I'd okay. be like, oh, let's go to the inner city. You're like, oh, I can't really. It's magic. I'd be like, oh, okay. We'll just we'll go to the outer city one. Okay. Well, you can go to the nice noble temple on the outer city. Um, this is where me and my uh, people would hang out, Grau. This was the life. It's very different here, Grau. It's much quieter. 
There's a couple of stringed musicians off to one side playing music that fills the room gently. Mm. Um, there's some polite laughter. But it's, mu it's much, much more quiet. You know, there's no rowdy, rambunctious things. It's not filled. I mean, there's the smell of like food that's cooking, but there's not like the smell of stale beer. And everyone's got these like tall glasses and they're doing things delicately. There's not like a hunk of meat that you grab with your hand. And you ch Everything's like forks and knives and very detailed and well presented. And you order, you know, a steak that you might normally, you know, comes all juicy and lovely. And here it's like, in this very careful shape with this side of veggies and this other thing, this like gentle sauce mm. drizzled all over it. And it's, it's very, it's very human. different. How does I'll order us two mini tortillers, which are like fancy little meat pies. Um, and I'll have them come to our table and I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll eat mine with a fork and knife. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this growl? Um, I think Grau's seen people eat with fork and knives before. He's definitely seen it. Autumn's place. He's practiced it. Um, mm. And um, he's still a little bit suspicious of it, but the food is really good. Oh, yeah. This is a good place. It's really good. So he's just. Order like, us some wine. Mm hmm. He's mm, holding back. Rotten grapes. Um, on like just going all out because he knows, you know, he's practicing being, being good. He's practicing table manners. Um, Small bites, growl. Helps you enjoy the flavor more. Helps me enjoy the flavor. It lasts more. longer that way. But I would take a small is, bit. Is this the sort of situation in which Grau can reliably hold back, or does he need like a wisdom willpower check in order to hold back? I, I want to know where you are in your progression of civilization. Are you still at the checking phase, or are you at the? You know, I think for this success. specifically, eating with like other people is something he's been doing like every day. He's had a lot of practice doing this. I think he can do well um, for this specifically. I think it's only for stuff that he's not used to, where he still needs to hold back. But okay, like, like Good. when we started out, he still was definitely licking his crotch all the fucking time, just like hanging out. Um, but if he's told often enough that he needs to not do that, he's you know practiced that. And he has he has Good. more of that innate willpower to not. So I think he's he's holding up pretty well here. Okay. Well, it's a nice, lovely time you have in this fancy tavern. Stacy gets a look. She's never been to a place this good. Oh, yeah. Her table manners are as bad as Grau's, if not worse at this point, because she's never practiced high style life ever. Um and you'll notice um my prince, you'll you'll notice the looks of the other patrons giving you the side eye and then the stifled laughter because clearly you know how to behave in this area but also your clothes aren't the clothes of a prince anymore mm. and you're with these other two commoners who are only here because you clearly belong like when you speak and act you fit in and these people are here under your protection but like i think i find this to be not humiliating like i would have in the past uh, August finds this more to be funny. He's kind of thinking back to where he might have been one of the people uh, super snotty and like toddy and touty. Um, mm -hmm. And now he's here actually enjoying his time in the bar with two friends versus before he probably would be with someone he didn't like and he's mm -hmm. going to let them know, um, you know what? Don't Don't worry about the etiquette stuff. Just eat how you'd like. You have my permission. Grau is going to keep eating, he's going to observe around him, he's going to try to keep eating with good table manners, because, not because he thinks it's important or good, but he wants to kind of show to himself that he can. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because something in him is telling him, like, you're not a bear anymore. Um, and whenever he acts like one, it's told, he's been told that it's like a sign of weakness. Um, so he's trying to prove to himself right now that he can do this. Good. I'll, um, I'll call the waiter over. And I'll ask, can I send people drinks, waiter? You can send. They may not accept. Can I get two waters for that group right there? And I'll, like, point. No. Okay. 
I shoot him off then. Fucker. Why why weren't you allowed to send some water? Isn't it nice to send someone water? Why would they not want that? Yeah. This is a fancy establishment. It's where I used to go. These people aren't they don't like to have a joke. What is the <clears throat> joke? <laughs> well, usually you'll send people like a, a finer beverage, like a wine or like a whiskey. Uh, and me sending them water would just be kind of like telling them to kick rocks or they're not worth my time. The water is so nice and fresh and it's, I, it's, it's the most valuable thing I can imagine. Everything else you drink is made of rotten fruit. Hmm. Different perspectives. Good to know. Um, so what else do you do? Because go into the fancy place so that kills maybe an evening. Um, you take what's her face, Stacy, to the Temple of Cheese. Is there anything else you do? How how do you kill your time? Are you? I'm like, just gonna get people ready to go. The people in order. You know, okay. I'm gonna You're... get supplies for everyone, get all the stuff ready, and get our carriages loaded, and go and talk to the carriage driver. And that's probably what logistics. I'll do with my time. I'll do the logistical logistics, maintenance. Yeah. Perfect. All right. What about you, Growl? You're the last one. How are you going to spend your time in the city? You've got like, you know, a week where you don't actually have to do anything because everyone else is doing all the important tasks and you can't do anything. I think he's going to spend a lot of time walking around different areas of the city and mm -hmm. just kind of looking out for places that say like, this is where, like, an alternative spiritual crowd might hang out. This is where, like, the people right. hang out that don't fit in. This is where, you know... Ah. You're home again, home again. Make me... Make me a chariz... No, no. You're, you're here for a week, and you don't have any other tasks, so you can actually go to all these places and do all these things pretty easily. Yeah. Um, I need you to roll me, roll me a 3d20, please. <laughs> a six, a 19, and a one. It's beautiful, bro. And uh, roll me 3d8. Excellent. Excellent. Love it. Mm. One of these days, you're walking around, you're looking up for these alternative places, and you're getting a little frustrated because you're not really finding the alternative spots that you want. Yeah. It's just everything seems so up and... It takes a while to find these places. Uh, but one evening, after getting lost on the far end of the city and you're starting to make your way home... Um, you spot like a little flicker of light coming out of an alleyway, an alleyway that looks like uncomfortably tight. You know, you don't have to turn sideways, but if you walk forward, your shoulders might brush the stones on either side. Just a little bit too uncomfortable of a space for anyone to really go down, but there's a light coming from the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, letting you know there's there's something going on there. Maybe, just maybe, this, this is the sort of alternative space you're looking for. Um, and then you're gonna glance down that alleyway, and I need you to roll me a charisma check. Like plus four? At plus four. What'd you roll? Uh, 11 plus seven is 18. And then four on top of that makes 18. it a 22. There's a figure mm -hmm. in the alleyway. And you only, I asked for the check because you're only getting to see part of their face and you're getting the plus four in it because it's a person you intuitively recognize. Uh -huh. It's Forrest. No fucking way. He's walking down this alley and like, you know, he hears some sounds and he does like a half turn just to kind of give a glance over his shoulder. And either he doesn't recognize you or he's trying not to interact with you, but um, he just keeps going down the alleyway in the direction of that warm gentle Do you remember light. what form i was in when i last met him you saw him as a gnome yeah it was right? a gnome oh fuck. okay yeah that's probably why i didn't work 
And he's just standing there, yeah? He was on his way down the alleyway when you spotted him. Okay. If I were to slip into this alleyway right now, would anyone see me? Like, in the alleyway? Uh, nope, he's the only one in the alleyway. There's some other people in the streets, but they're all kind of doing their own thing, and it's a busy city in the evening. Maybe somebody might notice you, but they, you know, it would just be a random person watching another random person walk into an alley. I slip in, I look around if there's anyone watching me right now, and I turn into a gnome. <laughs> gnome. Look By the time again. you take gnome form, he's gotten to the back end of the alley. It looks like there's maybe a little courtyard. He's gone around a corner, and you can't see him. Nobody seems to be noticing you or caring. Okay. I try to, I try to chase after him. I try to see if I can find him, follow him, maybe get his attention. Yeah. Uh, you can go down the alley, go around the corner. There is a little stairway that has like a, a lantern hanging outside of it and a little overhang over the stairs. Um, and there's just a simple door. It looks like a door that would lead into someone's house or someone's kitchen or someone's cellar. It doesn't look like a public building. Yeah. Um, but that's the only build. That's the only door in this small courtyard, the small like three meter by three meter courtyard that has a, a tree growing out of the center of it. I mean, he Bench went the in tree. there. It's either he climbed the tree yeah. and disappeared, or he went down this doorway, or, or scaled a wall, or he's invisible, or he teleported. Okay, I carefully enter the building. I even it's unlocked. I knock on like the the uh, door frame a little bit. <laughs> Hello. I enter. Uh, ooh, okay, yeah, you knock on the door frame. There's no answer. You enter. What do I see? It's a, a staircase okay. that goes down. Like, it runs straight forward and down maybe you know, five meters. I'll head down. Right. I'm determined. I want to find forest. There's a lantern at the bottom of the staircase where it takes a, a sharp right and opens up into a, a little bit of a landing where there is another door. And on this door, there is the, the shape of a beetle um, that has been painted onto the door itself. Okay. I've never seen this beetle before. Mm, make me an intelligence check. Anyone? It's a firefly. That's right. That makes sense. I guess I wouldn't notice that. Okay. I've seen fireflies before. And this is like a on a door, right? It's on a door underground. Yes. At the back of an alley past another nondescript door. Yeah. And knock on the door. Yeah. So how long do you wait before you you make a move? Um, just what the no, like what like fifteen like a seconds. Normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Towards the end of that fifteen seconds, probably around second thirteen or so, the door opens suddenly, and a hand reaches out as if it were trying to grab a human height person, but but you're a gnome, so the door opens, the hand comes out, and then the person looks down, and it's Forrest who makes eye contact with you and withdraws their hand and goes, you, Forrest. I, I can't believe I found you, Forrest. The hell are you following me here for? I, I Get in here. Just shut the fuck up and get in here. I, I get in with him. Um, you can see that this room has a table with a magic lantern hanging over it, that it emits no heat, but a soft yellow light. And sitting around that table, well, standing now are three other elves with short swords drawn. Well, two elves with short swords drawn, one elf with like a pinch of something in their hands. I've seen elves before, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You think so? Probably. I mean, I you can't for really second. remember. Um. <clears throat> Uh, hello, uh, hi, so, sorry to, uh, disturb you guys. Um, I just, 
Forest here is my friend. One of the elves speaks in Elvish. Do you do you understand Elvish? No. 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 Uh, Forrest will shake his head and say, this is the one I was telling you about, the one that recognized me back in Swampside. And That's they right. will, the components will, will go back in a pouch. The swords will lower, but not be sheathed. I, I, listen, Forrest, I, I, I've been looking for you. I, are you okay? What happened to you? He came for me. Then. Yep. Came, they came Smiles. For, and then, and then what happened? They got me. They got you. Oh, they put me in chains. They dragged me off to the big city. And uh, and I walked out. I walked out. A little stack of paperwork. And and then someone else cuts him off in Elven, and he stops his speech. <clears throat> he rubs his head. You know, show one of those half Elven ears. Maybe I'm saying too much. Uh, what was your name again, fellow? It's, it's Growl. I'm Growl. Growl? That's right. Fireflies. Fireflies? Growl. It's it's nice to meet you. Um, I, um... Really, really... Because cause this happened a while ago. What, what did I tell Forrest about, like, my nature and stuff? Because I think we told him quite a lot, right? God, I don't even remember as a player, as a, as a DM. Yeah. It's been, I think, years in game. Yeah. You know, they, they caught me too. I was in chains too. Hmm. But it's also, Horace, listen, I, you're the, I, I don't know what happened to my head or to me. It's, it's all. The only thing I remember is that I know you. I recognize you from before I remember anything. Isn't isn't that weird? Uh, when you're saying this, one of the other elves, the one of the sword wielders, begins to put down their sword. And they say something to Elvin that you don't understand. And they say it again, same word, you don't understand it. And they walk towards you and crouch down <clears throat> and say in common... Who are you? You look familiar. I I do. Yes. It's 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 that's really good because I don't know who I am either, and maybe if you know who I am, then we can maybe you can finally What's your tell name? me. I'm I'm Growl. I'm from far away. The elf looks back at the others. They all shake their heads in confusion. Listen, I I was trying to figure out how much he's trying to reveal here. There is there was a time where I was alive and I don't remember anything. And then something happened and then I started remembering stuff. And and you you're the only thing I remember from before that. Isn't Im imagine going through your life and you don't know where you're from or who you are and then you notice something that you remember wouldn't you run after that there's a quick exchange of words in elven between the three non-forest people in the room um it sounds like they're having like a very very hurried and curt discussion with one another um, and it ends with like some more shaking of heads <clears throat> Um, and someone saying, "Where, where are you from?" I don't, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. I don't know. I don't. I just one day I was in the swamp and I was, I, I got a. They caught me and arrested me because, because I'm, because Ooh. I'm a druid. Would you roll me a D10, Growl? You want to roll really high here. Oh, fuck. Lucky. Right. As you're discussing these things, a bright light overwhelms the room. Um, you need to make me four 
saving throws versus spell, please, Growl. Holy shit. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. tell him he fails, Neil. <laughs> One. Wait, what? Two. Three. This is four. That saving throws. With 157 those, those aren't great for you, Growl. Oh, no, no, those are no, not no. great. It's four saving throws for each of the four elves, I think. Holy um, shit. We're going to end our session here. Nice. We will be back in two weeks with some more outcasts. What just um, happened? Growl, you, there's a light. <laughs> there's some movement. There's a series of spells. And um, Did the cops we'll just hit and more. they got flashbanged? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> What's what? We'll find out in the next episode. <laughs> All right.